exclusive Wednesday night twitch.tv backslash conspiracy horseman show and you've got a special episode tonight because right now we don't know who's going to do the run in or if the cops busted Greek god Papadon again and they've got him downtown for questioning but right now look at look at look at here look at how he got back should I ask you for a dance no hold on it's Stevie Richards back from the wolf pack and we're here on the conspiracy horseman infidels and I've had enough of the bullshit this week so I'm ready to rain down upon you we're talking Talking robots taking over the world, the end of day scenarios, and all of these new sexual abuse allegations. So watch yourself, watch your back before you get abused with the truth tonight. YOLO. <laughs> yes, yes, y'all, we're back. Uh, little Y cleft to start it off tonight. I need something a little more positive, some gangster rap. Uh, but uh, we are back tonight. Uh, hopefully, Big Sal will join us later. He's. Uh, doing his work and you know might do a run in on us but greek god papa don's got some business so right now i'm glad to be back with my tag team partner who started it off with me he actually started the conspiracy horseman so the dynamic duo hacker hameen and big stevie cool stevie how you doing brother i'm doing great we're two men down right now so if the illuminati and the new world order and everybody in the shadow government and the deep state or whatever we're calling them this week uh <laughs> want to attack uh we we already have people in the chat room so we're actually five up we have three people in the chat room right. so we're back up our numbers are up and we're feeling good no black helicopters yet so we're good yeah, let me- love alex jones used to do that there's helicopters flying overhead <laughs> or bill cooper Roy Cooper used to do that. Yeah, yeah. We have some black helicopters outside. <laughs> well, I, actually, I probably do since I live a mile from an Air Force base, K Faves. So, uh, but last night I was out with the dogs of war while he was out taking a piss. Uh, Obaza been chomping, and uh, I looked up uh, in the sky, and you know the moon or the hologram that's the moon was pretty bright, and they were doing chemtrails at night. So, what pretty, does that look like? Uh, you could see them, like because there was enough illumination in the small city I live in. You could see that there was straight lines and crisscrosses in a 90 degree angle and how some of them were dissipating. And then today was supposed to be a warmer day. And then there were all strange, like blanket, dark gray clouds in the sky that didn't really move. They, you know, and then the wind came up, pushed them off, but, uh, they were just, you know, a holdover for as bright as it was last night. And to wake up this morning in cloud cover, it definitely was man-made, dude. And I know that video got sent around uh, from the CFR where the head of the CIA was there at the Council on Foreign Relations putting over uh, that, you know, I, I can remember how many times we were told as that was a big one of tinfoil hat where it's contrails, not chemtrails. And nope, they come out at the CFR to say, yeah, we are uh, doing this to control weather and they can blame it on global warming or whatever they want to do so they can get their money via carbon tax credits and bullshit. And that was a while ago. And yeah. uh, once again, I'm going to go right after him and say, uh, Eddie Bravo brought it up on Joe Rogan and he was talking about it. And it's funny once that I, I noticed a, a pattern with that, you know, that, that you just shut down people. Yeah. When you say you look on YouTube, there's a video of the guy talking about SAI talking about doing this and they just say, well, I'm, I've had enough. I'm done. I, I don't need to hear any of this anymore. This is ridiculous, yeah. right? They use every yeah. kind of, by the way, by the way, as I was talking about the black helicopter, which stuttered, that's what Scott <laughs> said in the oh, chat shit. room. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, uh, I'm sure they're watching, especially now because we're adding Crow 777. The first hour of his shows, I think, starting this week, uh, Billy Ray Valentine's going to start uh, uploading those. We did a little bumper on uh, the show we did on the Infinite Fringe. Um, you know, I thought that was a, a really fun show because I'm not super up on the Beatles thing. I know the Billy Shears stuff and, you know, the replacement of Paul McCartney, but they had some great stuff with Walt and Josh Corey from Iron Realm Media. But we did a half hour extra at hackerhameen.podbean.com. So if you listened on Truth Frequency, you may want to hop over and hear the replay because we got a, a nice little bumper set in the beginning there. And uh, they, they shadow banned this guy. They did not even shadow banned him. They took his channel down for no reason. And then last week they had like that danger malware ahead screen pop up on Google Chrome like uh, you might get for some torrent sites or whatever. Uh, so they're definitely out to get them. But like I said, you you got us all in the wolf pack right here, and uh, you're not going to come and hacker how me and Stevie like that. I got too many Stevie kicks loaded up for you, ready to go. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's huge news. Crow, Crow 777 is kind of 
getting mainstream around all the conspiracy circles and even outside of that uh secure team 10 picked yeah. up his uh lunar i never saw the lunar wave video that is oh, no. weird it almost looks like the the old school line like a line on a monitor when you're shooting with a camcorder yeah. and i what is a lunar wave? A lunar wave? How did he explain that? He doesn't really know. I mean, there's there's a there's a couple different things. It does look like that old VCR '80s tracking when you would put it in there and it would first correct itself, right? Um, but he was, you know, uh, shooting a lot of Saturn, uh, and he is a flat earther, so I'll put that over. <laughs> but uh, you know, and he he doesn't agree with Tyler on some of the alien stuff based upon that. But you know, he was saying, is it some type of projection that was correcting itself is the moon a holographic projection but it's been around for so long and and when i doubt i doubt that but then other people who are flat earthers say that and this is i believe in the bible as well that space is water right and the simpsons kind of put that yes. over on their uh you know predictive programming stuff too when homer hits the home run in, in the baseball game and it cracks the firmament and water and whales start coming down so it looks like a possible wave you know some some big title shift that goes over it slowly but he was the first one to capture it ever and i guess like three or four others have now captured one but his was, you know, out of the gate, and it wasn't anything he was looking for or manipulated. There was, and it's been tried to be debunked, but it hasn't been yet. So, he's and, got and the big thing about that is, since it was such a discovery and it's it's high resolution stuff, and it yeah. takes up a great deal of bandwidth and storage, YouTube was really the only economical choice for him to have. Vimeo or any of like, these other things are going to charge per yeah. per uh, gigabyte, and and these things are he said they're like hundreds of big gigabytes, if not terabytes of of data that he he can't he can't withstand the cost of doing that. Yeah. Um, I want to give you something real quick too. This is funny because I just uh, checked it out and, and I've been following. You know, being wrestlers and having wrestling fans, uh, we're not allowed to. We're not wrestling fans. I mean, other <laughs> as you listen with the locker, we're not wrestling fans anymore. <laughs> but uh, you know, how wrestling fans can sometimes be very negative and try to shut you down. And actually, in entertainment itself, or even with Crow Triple Seven trying to put out some information it, it gets a lot of hate or if you're outside of the the normal category that you're supposed to be yeah. like you're supposed to be labeled and that's it and you can't be anything different long story short he gets shadow banned he gets shut down his appeal goes down yet there's been multiple occasions where someone has typed literally and i'm talking about like on a giveaway or a free workout something positive something that's very sterile not not nothing like what we talk about and motherfuckers are putting in the comments, you're washed up, you should go off and kill yourself, or you should die, or you should do this, and all this other shit. And it's fine. I don't care. They'd never say it to my face. <laughs> so, yeah. But on a side note, I, I report some of them. I'm like, this isn't right. People see it in the comments, and then they go back on them, and they start trying to harass the people that are trying to, you know, say, you know, knock it off. And YouTube comes back, and the first thing they say is when I say, hey, this person's actually – you know, threaten violent threats against me. And they're like, no, you have to understand this part. I, I'm paraphrasing. They come back with after I send it in and get back to me and say, no, the, the person was just really stating their opinion. So I know it's not a human being. It's the algorithm. Right. But if you have the word die in a comment, you should die. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a, or you should kill yourself. You would think that that would set off some sort of algorithm there. And and those are the kind of people, too, those negative people that go out there and do nothing but try to just live off of being negative. Yeah, well, be send that shit my way and let me try and catch you hacker style on some reverse uh, engineering when I when I come back at you. And don't see if I'm not sitting on your front porch when you get the fuck home and I'll slap you up free of charge. I'm not worried about it, you know, but uh, that that cyber bullying, that shit is what some people get their rocks off on, man. And like that's all they really have. And if they want to come at you for whatever else you're doing, I, I, I'm super pumped that you're creating all this content with Stevie Richards, fitness.com with your tech reviews. You, you know, you're connecting with people, not just on like a, Oh, I did this shit in, in ECW at this level. You, you're staying modern content related. Maybe up that's to what date. pisses them off because yeah. I'm not giving, I'm only, I'm being what I want to be and yeah. what I oh, hope, what absolutely. I aspire to be rather than living in the past, like, excuse my language, most of these motherfuckers that I wrestled with throughout the years, I'm not, I don't want to be that. No. And, and you're not, and it's, and it's just, haters are gonna, you know, 
want that life of what's going on, especially I fucking hate on you with all the free shit you get, you son of a bitch. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I haven't had at least three. Well, no, I did today. Sorry. I did not correct myself. <laughs> yeah. You, always, you wanted to go under and like, Oh no, I never mind. I did get some more free shit. Hate on me. Uh, you know, that, you know, that's just them living a piece of shit, miserable life. And I, I don't, you know, I'm not one to report anybody back because I'm not a stooge like you are, but like, uh, you know, that, Thanks. <laughs> I had to get that in for popping on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the fact is like, I just laugh and say, who the fuck did you ever be? What have you accomplished in your life? And your life is so fucking small and miserable that it makes me laugh that that's what you have to come out to try and do. And if you think you're going to get to me, please step up and cut a promo on me because I'll come right back at you like this shit's a fucking 1988 rap battle and I'll eat your lunch. So if you're hiding behind some bullshit uh, monkey jack or 25 name, I don't give or a fuck. Or the egg on Twitter, the yeah. egg icon. Yeah, the egg. Like, <laughs> like you think you're over, as Rip Rogers would say, you ain't over. <laughs> so. Well, you know what? I only did it because they were harassing other people. I don't I don't even answer those. I didn't really answer. The, it, it's just whatever. I mean, that as a, as a heel throughout most of my career that's what you want yeah you know you want you want heat oh, I but as, a, as <laughs> that's someone, all i want <laughs> yeah but but you know there's also people we try to we try to remember or at least i try to remember that there's people in this world that you know aren't exposed to that or aren't desensitized to that kind of interaction so i try to you know there i don't want somebody coming to the channel seeing the comments and saying, oh, I don't, I don't want to be subscribed and see all this bullshit like like I would. You know, I don't want to see all this negative yeah. bullshit or whatever. You know what I mean? People back and forth, just fucking too much going on in the world. But the point, the very long-winded point of the whole thing is there's such a double standard. Crow 777 is not doing anything to harm anybody. No. He's not doing a damn thing. He's just putting information out. Whether you believe it or not, you think he's crazy or he's onto something – it's up to you to decide, not Google, not YouTube, not Facebook, not the government, not the fucking FCC and all these other people. There's nobody that should decide what we think is the truth or crazy or fucking logical except for the viewer or sure. listener. What's weird to me is why him too? He's not a big personality putting his face out there. Maybe that's the reason why they went at him. He had a, a great following. He was doing 200,000 views and whatnot. But even if you listen to his stuff, he's never like, like Alex, this is the way it is. And this is, you know, or, you know, he's actually. Yeah, Alex Jones should be shut down. Yeah, well, he's they, they, couldn't, they couldn't come at him like that. He's too big. Uh, it, it's just that Crow, Crow even like will put something out there and he'll shoot down his own points and be like, there's no way to prove that. So that's probably bullshit anyway. So like for them, to, I don't know if it's an, a jilted ex-girlfriend of his that works at YouTube or something, but like mm. uh, speaking of, of YouTube, he with that, there's some, you know, as far as them being part of the eugenics, Illuminati, cabal, pedophile, whatever the fuck is going on. They got heat last week with, all you had to do was type in how to have and up came the first two things was sex with your child or sex with children. And there's no way that's coming up on how to have as the first searches in, in the algorithm. So they absolutely had to program that, whether that's some one or two people thinking they're, you know, slick and trying to put that shit over during the time of all this sexual discourse and hoping the pedophiles will fall. But really, that's so tasteless that it makes you look like, oh, we're part of the elite and this is what's going on. So I'm going to fucking do this because I can. It's time to start demasking or unmasking these people who are the faceless people at YouTube and putting them all on blast. These little desk jockey nerds who really live no life, who live behind the red box with the white arrow on it because they got to fall too. If they're going to try and play those games, you just opened yourself up to catch a hot one. And you're gonna. Yeah. Uh, real quick, uh, someone asked, Scott asked in the chat room, did someone strike Crow's channel or just demonetize him? Uh, they actually, they shut him completely down, right? Yeah, at first he was demonetized. Then he got a strike, two strikes, and he didn't do anything like 
clap back against them except put out uh you know another video that's just like the modern day book burning is what he refers to it as it was during las vegas uh you know and and doing the study of that like how many conspiracies he couldn't say the word las vegas he He couldn't say even on our show he was trying not to say it because it would get flagged yeah he said the v word i was like fuck that you say whatever you want and you know (laughs) like yeah there there is no (laughs) there's no buffer here when it comes to that kind of shit because if the fact that they shut that down further goes to show that they are behind some greater uh you know cover up of it all trying to do that and they didn't think that uh you know crow's doing vegas but he's got this lunar wave footage now it's out there on uh tyler's secure team 10 channel Ty- tyler's got 1.1 million followers that, now, that did got they shut, did they shut him down did they nope. did not shut him down did they demonetize that video i'd like to send him a message mm. and see if even that, it, that would be a telling story yeah. that is it the footage or are they going after crow himself well, crow's not on it vocally so no no like, no but 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 the footage is from right. and he says his name and it should catch the algorithm right right if so, there's anything in there but tyler just got his youtube gold button so he's a he's a youtube darling along those lines right because he looks at everything with a positive spin even though he's against censorship and whatnot and he'll put that over i imagine if that did get demonetized because he, he did a thing on the adpocalypse but like uh that he would come back and be like more strange activity because that would just be a way to drive him to it. but when we interviewed crow he said He's not going to play it like a game of battleships. He's pissed off. They're like, why should I have to restart my channel, even though he does feel that he owes it to his followers to some degree? But I, I'm saying, you know, and I got to get down off my high horse sometimes and make moves that go against my morality a little bit and how I think things should. We talked off air a little bit about how we want to form the media group. But Crow right now could come back based off of that Tyler thing and double his – uh, you know, follower list based on people who want to get back on there, but now people who are aware because Tyler Secure Team 10 has such a huge following. And to me, that's just a fuck you back to YouTube of like, you think you're going to take me out and big dog me? I'll use your own platform against you. And now I'm coming back with double the followers. So there's no such thing as bad press. So please come at Hacker Hameen. See what happens to you. Watch me increase my viewer level. Watch me go on Alex Jones. Watch me flex all of my producer, uh, you know, connections. And I will come out of the woodwork and be 10 times bigger. Yeah, most of these guys, uh, especially in the conspiracy category of channels, always have a backup channel or two of them. Sure. Jacob Israel has one. I even have one just in case. There's a ton of, you know, I don't have anything up there, but we've already did that experiment by putting up Conspiracy Horseman episodes and what happened. They started, at, like, demonetizing all my videos. And yep. I took them down and I put them back for review and they re-monetized all the videos once I took them off. That's crazy, man. Well, I mean, my, my channel, since the apocalypse and since they clipped wrestling, is, is laughable. I'm not going to sweat eleven dollars a month that they're like oh gonna hold that over my head get the fuck out of here that's two face slaps at a show uh you know i'm not i'm not worried about that i'm i'm here to put truth content and keep an audience and build a following to the point that if they try and do anything all i gotta do is drop one message and release the hounds and my soldiers will come out and and do the work for me it's not me just fighting this battle and that's how you endear and ingrain people to you who are truth seekers who are wrestling wrestling fans and when it comes time to really pull the trigger on something of a social movement i got the pieces in place you're just a nameless faceless hack not you but whoever it is behind uh you know youtube who's gonna catch heat for it and you will be exposed i hope so i hope so but it seems like uh, alg- algorithms and ai and robots and uh, the human element and everything is being taken out of it and whatever human element is left it's not a good one. Yeah, how to have sex with your <laughs> children? Like they think that's a fucking funny rib. Dude, if that's a rib, man, that's a that's about the worst joke I've ever heard of. But yeah. but that's <laughs> them. the evidence shows it may not be all that much of a joke to these people. Not at all, man. Um, so appreciate you guys in the chat room on twitch.tv slash conspiracy horseman. You're the coolest of the cool kids right now. Uh, you know, spread the word, spread the love. And, uh, if you're a wrestling fan too, don't uh, forget to uh, catch house of hardcore tonight on Twitch. Our ECW brothers over there doing their thing. Tommy dreamer, uh, you know, getting that out there as well, but, uh, real quick, real quick, uh, even tagging conspiracy horseman in, uh, 
the WWE 2K18 videos gets uh, flagged. Oh, does it? Awesome. I think it's just a word conspiracy. Sure. Because if you put that in there anywhere, they they, they won't do it. So. I got to put over Scott Maxwell. He started the Hameen uh, Media Discussion Group on Xbox One and PlayStation. So if you are a follower of our platform, you can go in there. Like we have all the interaction on Facebook, you should join it there, the Hameen Media Discussion Group. Uh, you know, that's primary wrestling. We I do post all our uh conspiracy stuff in there but uh if you're on that 2k18 you can go link up there and uh you know you could probably play stevie versus stevie or hameen versus hameen with as many creator wrestlers as we got at this point so we fight ourselves every day so why don't you (laughs) exactly man um but yeah so a lot of interactivity going on we appreciate you being on the exclusive first 24 hours on twitch because uh you know this is a, a cool deal that they came to us with we didn't even have to petition them so it was nice, man. I'm glad you hooked that up, too. So I'm going to dive uh, over here into the Conspiracy Horseman mailbag real quick, all right? We got some awesome. old we got some old ones that we didn't really uh, get we to. We had, like, two left over from a while ago. Yeah, and so, a couple yeah. of So this one's from Brock Wilbur. This goes back to November 9th, so this is. Oh. <laughs> Dude, there's, Brock, we'll, we'll say this real quick. Yeah. It's not us. It's all the fucking scumbags in the world. There's so much going on. (laughs) It's just, it's every time we want to get to something or do something like we can't even get to like the Paul McCartney type conspiracies because once again, it's just piling on and, and rolling downhill. Yeah, I'd like to do that one on here, too, when uh, the guys are back and bring on Walt from Iron Realm Media. I'm actually going to be on Iron Realm on uh, on uh, iHeartRadio this Friday around 4 o'clock live. So uh, you guys want to tune into that. I look, I'm look, i looking forward to going on there and uh, hearing what those guys uh, got to bait me with with those flat earth <laughs> I might be on the week after. I already got the invite. Awesome, man. Uh, they're good dudes for sure. So Brock Wilbur says, hey, guys, I hate thinking about this, but I just saw an article that says the church in Sutherland Springs, Texas, that was shot up will be demolished. To me, uh, to be announcing that not even a week after of just a week of reeks of conspiracy to me, they've probably been wanting a new building and what better way to get the funds for it than to have half your congregation shot in order to get it from the comfort of my garage with, with a blunt rolling Brock. Well, light it up Brock, because, uh, that might be the only relief uh, that we get in these upcoming trying times as the war on Christmas <laughs> falls upon us. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, that's, uh, you know, the, the, the classic church fund is always seems like the most ongoing scam of, of any church. Um, I don't know. I, I, I can't put over the fact of, like, <laughs> we need a new church. Let's wipe out half our congregation and so we get, can get a GoFundMe because I know the – well, supposedly the preacher's daughter was shot as well. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure along those lines uh, if that was their M.O. with that. But to cover up the scene, you're spot on with that. 9-11, they get rid of all the evidence, ship it to China on boats. None of it's really gone over where you can look at uh, all of the metal that was melted and, and do real analysis of it. Or actually the amount of metal, the amount of material since yeah. – there was not the the fifty thousand phone, fifty thousand desks, fifty thousand chairs they're missing. Right. You know, you don't really have an account for uh, any of that. Like Sandy Hook, same yeah. thing. Sandy Hook, same Got thing. Well, yeah. that not the school gets demolished, and then they demolish the home as well. Of uh, it was Lanza? The, yeah, of Lanza's home, and it was actually his brother's oh. home. So just wiping everything clean. So there's no reason for anyone who's an outside journalist to go and investigate because there's nothing left to investigate anymore. That's very, I don't know, demolishing buildings that, that Matt, once again, Columbine has not to this day been, yeah. that must have been real. Will Mandalay Bay be taken out and they put up a new Mandalay Bay? Who knows? I mean, it's so it's probably so much emotion just to look at that hotel of gold and, and that's lights what and everything. Put it on. And that's it brings what back bad memories. Yep. So let's bring it down. Yeah, it's been around for a while, so I wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility to demolish it. And I'm sure they got all the insurance set up, you know, based on that for tragedy to cash in, so they can do it. And new investors to get it on the property and and all that kind of shit, man. So Brock, I think you're definitely onto something when it comes to a week after during this tragedy. And I said it day two, uh, you know, you look at this guy, 
there's how many different stories of what he really was. They put it on him being an atheist, so it's just like, you know, anti-religious versus the super religious. But before that, when it first came out that he used to teach vocation Bible school, that he was dishonorably discharged, and, you know, that he had a gripe. Well, if he had a gripe, he would have gone and shot up some military uh, installation, not anything against the church. You know, the, the pre, did the preacher molest him or his kids? That didn't come out as anything, you know, like as an angry dad. So to me, this is so another straight up MK Ultra trigger dude that they probably did dishonorably discharge. Maybe they programmed him while he was still in. And, you know, off the races he goes with one phone call. The guy's got kids himself, so it doesn't make sense that he would waste his own life uh, to do that when, you know, he should be dedicated to being a father that I don't believe the fanaticism would drive him to do that along those lines, just being an atheist. And me being one as well, like, I don't, I, I get pissed at the a point of like, the control of religion or the farce of these Vatican pedophiles doing or, or gays doing whatever they're doing uh, behind the scenes and preaching judgment, but never is it like we got to take them out. I, I don't know any angry atheist who's like that. Even Chris Hitchens in his uh, rants was never calling for violence against anyone. He would do everything with logic and reason and dispel the bullshit of religion. So to me, it smells like a total MK ultra uh, split personality job. Nothing makes sense. <laughs> Nothing. I was no. about to say the uh, social social justice warriors, if they weren't too busy being offended, they would probably they get pretty violent. Yeah. Well, it was funny. They're the most violent ones of all. Yeah, well, I saw. You know, I watched Punisher, and I wasn't gonna. You know, I know no spoilers. I I went through that on Netflix, but. We know it's a ex vet, you know, taking out the bad guys of society using all of his uh, special operation skills. And I see <laughs> my Chicago social justice warrior crew, comedy crew, who are always anti gun, anti all this shit. And then in the same breath, they're putting over the Punisher, who the whole thing is fuck the society. <laughs> let's take out the drug dealers. Let's take out the fucking real criminals, the behind the scenes and shit. And, uh, you know, from Homeland yeah. security to the CIA. So they want it both ways, but it's such bullshit that that video you sent me earlier today with Jesse Ventura talking about, you know, concealed carry having, uh, uh, a janitor like a kayfabe kayfabe yeah. security guy in the yep. janitor outfit right and the kids never need to know and that could cut back on a shooting and you got somebody there and people are always saying oh there's no such thing as good guys guns well fuck that because that's what happened in texas that's how that guy got taken out was somebody heard the shots went back in his house came out shot the son of a bitch so concealed carry really is the only answer you're never gonna go door to door and you can put over the australia bullshit all you want to that's never gonna happen happen here it really needs to be easier to get a concealed carry pistol to shoot stop this stuff if there was two dads in texas which i'm surprised because texas is a pretty gun loving state that there wasn't two dads with pistols in the church right there themselves and as soon as this guy would have come in i mean he was firing shots from outside as soon as he would have come in he would have got laid down so well, i'll tell you one place that it never happens you never hear about it is new hampshire they have a concealed carry and they they let you bring it in the bars bring it in the stores Live free or die. I have, when's yeah. the last time you heard about New Hampshire having a mass uh, killing? No, you don't. You don't want to fuck around. It's like every movie thing where one guy comes in with a gun and into the biker bar or whatever, and like freeze, and they all turn around and everyone draws down on him, right? Like, and like, oh, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, didn't uh, realize I was way in over my head right here. So, but that's exactly the greatest analogy right there. Yeah, the, you know, the people that are going to break the law are always going to get guns. Yeah. They're always going to get them. I don't, I don't understand why the argument doesn't end right there. It, absolutely, you know. I'm not pro. I'm not completely like, like I wouldn't be call myself completely pro gun, but I'm completely anti killing a bunch of fucking people. Sure. How's yeah, that? Yeah. I think that's. I think. You know. Uh, I don't know. Should you be on that side of the coin? <laughs> yeah. There's some YouTube. Well, I, I just don't understand their their logic. If if Jesse Ventura said that, I'd write comments where they were just like, "Oh, great. What if?" One of the kids steal the gun from the janitor and end up shooting everybody in the it's like a fucking yeah, it's just, 15 year old kid who's never been in a real fight is going to get, you know, some green beret, yeah, yeah. you know, or some seal. Yeah. Yeah. Like these, these that. things in their mind that they invent these, what if scenarios when the real scenario where people are in danger could be stopped. Uh, that's just them, you know, poisoning their own minds with 
to justify things any way they possibly can. They, they just cannot accept that they're on the wrong side of an argument. I think this is this this speaks to society in general, and it's it's pretty much the basic flaw that we talk about a lot with these conspiracy shows. Instead of doing your research, instead of finding something out and learning something and, and developing your own conclusion, you develop your conclusion from what you're told to conclude, and then you fight for the conclusion that you don't even know the facts or the logic or or the reasoning behind the conclusion you were given by somebody else. Like nobody really thinks for themselves to come to that conclusion. No, Does anybody really sat back and go, let me let me look at the stats and let me see what exactly has happened with gun deaths, with gun related deaths, with with people that have actually saved by having a concealed carry, all this stuff. No, they just say, um, this politician, because I'm on one team or the other, says that guns are this. So I need to follow the team. Yeah. Gang, and it's it, a gang. That's all it is. I'm yeah, in when this it gang, comes to during that gang, let's, right. let's just be in the gang. And when it comes to even take guns out of it, of treat women this way, and then oh, I'm Al Frank, and I'm grabbing your tits. How are you? Who's you the know? Who's the girl? Lena Dunham is that? Yeah, her name? Lena Dunham from Girls. I was I was just about to just just bring her up because she basically she she said someone raped her, and then she said they didn't, or it was wrong. Right. She she alleged somebody raped her, but she lied about it, and then she got on other women for lying about it or not or i don't even know it was so confusing she doesn't make any sense yeah well she's I'm definitely the push of the feminist uh feminazi uh in uh hollywood thing and and the fact that she knew about weinstein and was on a she was stumping for clinton and knew all that was going on and she she was torn should i go and do it even though i know it's a sponsored event well i guess i have to swallow my pride and do it to be part of the gang to get along go along to get along and then come back and bitch about it after the fact and she's one of the ones who was right up front and says if trump wins i'm out of here well her ass still lives in hollywood (laughs) she she didn't leave so you know all these people who try and do this escapism in their own minds of here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a martyr and do things this way. They never follow through on it. They're absolute bullshit. And and she's one too. Well, in the New York post, which usually posts pretty liberal stuff, right? They're not really a conservative paper. Um, they were saying that Leah Dunham, this is the article that I, that I had read. Um, she, uh, let me see. Leah Dunham may be the first person to fabricate details of her alleged rape, then proclaim all women's claims need to be believed, then publicly accuse a young woman of lying about being raped. And it, that it just go down here. Uh, to, to, uh, yeah, the only uh, – she wrote a thing. Uh, Leah – Barry Dunham wrote, was an unstylish white Republican, of course, who had a mustache, wore cowboy boots, hosted a radio show. A girl he once had sex with, Dunham wrote – said Barry left her in the bedroom spattered like a crime scene in blood. Dunham, Dunham wrote that she had a few versions of the story in her mind, but other people, including Curiously Girls writer named Murray, helped her see she'd been raped. So someone convinced her. The only problem with the story, just one guy in Dunham's time frame on her campus fit the description. His name was Barry. He never raped her. Uh, whether Dunham knew or cared about the damage she'd done, falsely accusing a man the media quickly identified giving unfair leverage to those who would doubt future victim stories became typically less important than her experience of the whole media maelstrom. So she just got got caught up with being the spokesperson. Right. Uh, These militant lesbians who get the shine based on their social justice cause will go to any lengths to try and win an argument, even if it's ruining somebody else's life, I guess. So, all right, here we go. I'm going to move on to the next one, and it's from Mr. I know, please. I got to get this picture of her (laughs) off my computer. (laughs) This is brutal. She's not a looker. (laughs) Big hairy legs and fucking... Chuck Taylor Converse. Oh, somebody in the chat room says Lena Dunham wrote. Yeah, that's the other thing. She wrote about how she used to diddle her sister. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, she's over. Definitely, definitely somebody you want to, uh, you know, keep on your TV and keep supporting and uh, make sure you wear a pussy hat and send her a picture on Instagram. All right, so this one's from Mr. Secret. I like the name. Hey, Horseman, love the show. 
Not a wrestling guy, but I love the conspiracy talk. Hey, you should be a worker then. I have a question and also some info that you can take or leave or hopefully look into for me. For my first question, Papa Don once mentioned that there was an agenda behind teaching slavery in school. I would like for him to elaborate on that agenda. Well, we'll have to bring that up because Pop's not on this week. He's actually uh, doing something uh, school-related tonight, so that's kind of funny. Um, here is an anecdote that I hope will be beneficial. I was take, talking with a friend that is in the Air Force about some, some conspiracies, including 9-11 and Hurricane Katrina. Later in the convo, after convincing him to give uh, some info he's heard, he tells me that Sandy Hook was a distraction from a failed military op where a ton of people died. I want to know if you guys know about this and this op and hopefully can look into it. Wow. Um, I know with most false flags, there's usually a training exercise within X amount of miles or X amount of weeks before that or congruently running at the same time. But I didn't hear anything about Sandy Hook with a big um, military. Well, now well, that they, I, they might not be. I think he's talking about overseas. There was a huge military. Yeah. Operation. Now that now that I think about it, I did hear that a long time ago. But I'm not really up on the facts of that. So I definitely want to take some time and research this instead of just talking out of my ass about yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> well, it's along the lines of when I see. This is the thing. I I remember what what they were trying to kind of gloss over was that, that 800 billion dollar budget thing in the military remember the yeah. increase oh yeah yeah there was a yeah, huge increase what, at the time. what was happening on that weekend where they they kind of like was it the weinstein stuff or was it before that what um, uh as far as the or was increase it vegas? Of, i think there was vegas something was that going happened on. where they passed that military spending vegas. bill and it was vegas mm -hmm. so it basically nobody was talking about the government spending all of this extra right. money on military yeah. Now, if we're talking Sandy Hook, was that a Lebanon or Syria black op or was it? Um, I don't think that was Benghazi at the time. It might have been. But, uh, you know, of, of, or where maybe someplace in Africa that guys were wiped out, but definitely something to look into. And I actually need to recall Wolf Bang, Wolf, Wolfgang, Wolf Bang, Wolfgang Halbig before. That's what uh, Lena Dunham's doing, Wolf Bang. <laughs> That's it. She's got the hair on her back standing up. That's for sure. God, I, just, I, I can't even see the picture I saw on the post of her <laughs> with the fucking purple makeup and tats. Just wanted to give a quick shout out, Strangler Steve. I know you're watching, man. Shout out to you, Strangler. Stop ducking me and uh, come on the locker room, giving up more bookings than pun in the brute squad over there uh but uh you know the, the when it comes to this stuff with sandy hook it does not surprise me one bit because of how homeland security was shown to be exposed and involved when is any of this stuff going on that it that this wouldn't be a drill and wolfgang back on the sandy hook episode even told us about how FEMA and Homeland Security are now united doing these capstones that uh, include a whole town from the churches to the hospitals to all government regulated uh, state officials. You know, the cops who kayfabed and went and worked on a construction site to make more money off the books, like just people's behavior and the way they were, the mother taking her daughter home and going to get shoes to bring back for the other teachers. It's like, you don't do this shit. Like the, the behavior is so strange that everybody was smartened up to something that was going on. And then they all signed some type of non-disclosure agreement to kayfabe it afterwards. So, uh, when it comes to a smoke and mirrors campaign to cover up some other tragedy, it absolutely could be that. Plus how long did it take for them to pass gun control in Connecticut right after that? These, these yeah. uh, arcane laws that they want to put forward. You know, there's a scene from The Punisher. I'm up the episode, I finished eight, uh, where the kid, the, the the vet that came back who has the PTSD, the young kid. Yeah. Remember, he's on the steps at a courthouse with yep. that old old fraud veteran who, you know, the f stolen dollar guy. Yep. And the cop comes up to him, and he's just basically stating the law and talking about how he's being respectful, and he's giving all the, all the different laws that say he can stand there and pass out flyers. Yeah. It reminded me of Wolfgang. We'll call him Wolfgang. Uh, <laughs> Wolfgang with that cop. That's what he. And, and that's when he tags with. He, that's when he tags with DDP. He's Wolfgang. <laughs> oh God! Whatever. Yeah, at least once a show bring that up. Right. So he makes nine million dollars a year. He doesn't need any free ad. <laughs> so, uh, but it reminds me. Even though the verbiage was completely different, the body language and where it could have went to yeah. was the same from that documentary. 
It you absolutely know, was when he the, walks up to the United. The cop. Yeah. It looked like he was almost about to say, are you looking at my weapon? Or are you, he could have said all this stuff. He does. He says, did you try- go for my weapon? He, that, that cop in the Punisher says it in Wolfgang's cop could have easily said it. It's, it's that he thought he was being a great, he was saying, trying to suggest mm-hmm. that Wolfgang was getting aggressive towards him or stepping towards him or it, it was getting there. Yeah. It was really odd. It, it's your basic, you know, ex high school jock living vicariously through his police department bullshit of uh, I big dogged people and, and big league people in high school. Cause I was a jock and now I do it cause I got a badge and a gun and you don't fucking want an unruled. Like those guys didn't study for test. Why the fuck would they study the law? <laughs> it's just yeah, the fact exactly. that uh, I can bench 275 and you better fucking respect me. Well, that guy could bench 275 from his fucking gut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have any kind of, yeah, but that, that was the shame of it. You can't even, I'm surprised Val Venus, when he was at that gas station, we saw that video of him. I was just going to say a, it, Val. Like he was that. aggressive. He was pretty yeah. aggressive, actually. That cop, he lucked out. Yeah. He could have got, he could have made a bad situation much, much worse. Yeah, but, he was pushing it. But that's the problem, man. That's the problem with all this stuff. There's so much autocorrection or overcorrection to the other side with, with all this stuff, like the Matt Wauer thing you were, we were going to talk about, too, which is the most recent one. Mm-hmm. But nobody's trying to overcorrect the in the right spots where cops like this are acting like this where where's this you know black lives matter and all these people with the cops that are really assholes that you need to you know to, to fucking call them out on their bullshit yeah well i mean there is a, a couple cop watch things on facebook and thankfully they haven't been too hot lately like they were two years ago when people are rolling up on them but um i think because enough of them may have gotten regulated i'm not saying this doesn't happen every day still of cops big league and people, but I don't know. I think the, the beat downs might be a little bit less and and what they can get away with now, but they're still going to try and get their shit in and, and there's going to be corruption and guys doing that and small mentalities that just don't change. So I don't know. Well, what, I'll what say this too. There, there are, there are good ones and I know a lot of good ones and there's bad ones, obviously. I, I feel like the, you know, when, when you have teachers, firefighters, cops people in those kinds of uh elements especially firefighters and cops that are making only a little bit more than somebody's on welfare starting out yeah they're not getting paid anything oh yeah for what they're doing you know that creates a uh you know an environment for them to be tempted to take the capstone payments and other things or or whatever else because they're, they're putting their lives on the line that should be a premium that's paid to them, but no, they get budgeted. They get I, cuts, I worry they about get that. I, I worry about the fact that if it is that they are getting premium pay, that will only increase their egos further to, <laughs> to look at how much more over we are than you motherfuckers. And well, you will it, somebody's us. always going to think that, but what I mean is like the stress of, of compromising their morals. Yeah. Because they got a family to feed and they're only making, I mean, I don't know what they could start out, but I know at least around here, the, the starting pay for firefighters and cops is lower than ever. Yeah. So you're you're you got more more work to do, more scary you know scary things going on out there, crimes up, all that stuff, and you're getting less pay for it. Yeah, and they're about to be as we're going to talk later replaced by robots to some degree as well. So it'll be interesting that way. But shout out Mr. Secret, some research I definitely needed to do before we follow up with Wolfgang or Wolf Bang as uh, as it goes, and uh, to, just to see. I'm tired of them putting your T-shirt link in here. I'm going to put mine. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, you know, to to put it over, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to ask him about it because I'm sure he's got some intel on it. You know, as many people uh, sending him stuff. So thanks, Mister Secret. So for Mark uh, Vales, Velez, uh, I always get it wrong. Horseman, hope you're well. Been rough lately hearing about, uh, but hearing material from you guys keeps me going. So thank you as always. Uh, you're welcome, pal. I uh, was wondering if you could speak more about the Montauk project. I know it's uh, where the Stranger Things crew gets their material, and I was just curious. Also, what's with the prints that was moved on the day and night the Vegas attack? Seeing all this clickbait, I thought, who better to ask than the horseman? Quick note, Stevie, wanted to thank you for not only convincing me to buy the Switch, but also for motivating me to get back on track with my health. Y'all are nice. 
Awesome. Uh, ben, as always, you're the man teaching my little ones that uh, smacks of the dome aren't free. Sal, thanks for being so cool to the fans, including myself, who reached on Facebook, especially when you could have just ignored it. Yeah, Sal's the best, man. You got some Sal in your life. Your day's always going to be better. And last but not least, the OG Don never changed, brother. Even when you had a bad Wi-Fi, continue to let the marks know the Greeks are the one step ahead and will create create something better. Fellas, for the umpteenth time, thank you for all that you do. Have a blessed one. Heels over strong. Y'all up. Um, yeah, man, uh, this guy's a good dude, a big supporter of the platform, uh, wants to help in any way he can, always promoting. Like I said, this is one of the dudes who's a soldier, so when if they do come after us like they do Crow, you know, we got these guys in place to, to push it forward, and uh, we, we know that you're supporting us. We want to keep things uh, going for you guys. But, um, yeah, the Montauk Project is interesting because we just I just saw this as well as some clickbait from stranger things of what they're doing predictive programming wise. And I saw that they're still doing it. They're still doing MK ultra out there on the end of long Island. And this goes back as well, not just with the MK ultra stuff that they wanted to do, but the Montauk monster, uh, you know, is a folklore out there where it looks like some type of, you know, Brock Lesnar, triple H version of a raccoon, uh, on the gas out John Jones style uh, and they find they found a couple of them washed up uh, you know and doesn't really fit any animal that you know has been skinned and that they can find in the bone record so are they doing uh, experiments out there where they're doing genetic experiments and, and releasing these animals and are they, I've heard about hybrid pig humans there as well uh, and a lot of people think that a lot of these flus and uh pop-up viruses are created out of there as well and then another part of the montauk project would be um it's not it's not necessarily time travel it could be uh but teleportation of them taking alien technology and trying to reverse engineer it and creating these force fields around a ship i believe it was and they teleported and some of the guys like wherever they were standing you know it shifted them around and like ended up being half in a wall like the wall would they they melded with the wall and cut them in half and like oh. all this strange kind of shit that went down there so there is some high level fuckery going on in at the end of long island in montauk and if you're out there uh let us know at conspiracy horseman at gmail.com or at bwo stevie or at ben underscore hameen or greek god at greek god papadon or at dead no save because sales uh, uh long island area too about what is really going on out there that you've heard rumors or conspiracy of i'm sure there's some kayfabe talk if you got you know <laughs> killer raccoons that are four foot you know in size and you the, the old school uh navy guys that are drunk down at the vfw got something to say about the energy weapons and the start of energy weapons along those ways with teleportation and now they didn't deny it and it's been confirmed that they are still doing mk ultra shit out there so that that camp hero i believe it's called not chris hero camp hero is uh you know some very high level dark black op top secret shit going on yeah i mean they were kidnapping locals and doing mind control on them they're talking about uh monsters coming through the what the montauk chair yeah what it's called there's a hadron it, collider out there too yeah, that, that there's so much stuff. You know, talking about that, and you're talking about Plum Island, where the where the Lyme disease came from. But they were doing all sorts of bio. Yep. There's a lot of you know HIV I supposedly out of there as well. I, I guess because you think in in conspiracy terms or movie and TV terms, it's always going to be Area 51 in the middle right. of the desert. There's not going to be anybody around. But hiding in plain sight is a lot easier, and you get your you get your test subjects a lot easier too if you're right near New York City. So it's not yeah. a it's you not a bad place some to be people. Yeah. if you're if you're have no empathy. And this could all tie into you know we're talking about CERN all the time. We're talking about that far away place in another country. But you said there's a there's a collider here. Who's to say that that, that this parallel universe, this Mandela effect stuff, and everything isn't more localized? Even? Yeah. That's why, you know, maybe, maybe it's not just a thing all over the world, but that thing turned on or something happened, you know, and, and maybe, maybe even, you know, this is just speculation, but you talk about a powerful antenna like the harp antennas, that, that kind of stuff could be, all right, yeah, it's for weather modification. Maybe it's something a lot more dark like this. Or you had Hurricane Sandy right in there, right? 
what if that where the focus of it was they were directing it right in there to try and test that kind of shit and i don't know if they're trying to get to uh it's not called the dark side was the upside down and and Mm -hmm. release that but obviously that's what cern's trying to do that's been stated in and even in the propaganda that they put out with their opera movie that that's what they're trying to do is reach the upside down and uh you know people have said it over and over again but the fact that the Montauk project, uh, if you go back and, and look at that conspiracy and we really should, and do almost a whole show on that of these sailors and, uh, and Navy guys who were in a, a black ops covert, you know, operation. And they, they, what I've read was that this, uh, weapon was successful in a lab setting and then they put it on the ship and it should create like a force field, a force shield around the ship and then can, move telepath te- uh, can teleport to another location but when it did that and it reappeared you know these guys were melded with the ship like imagine like you're on one side of a wall of an iron and, and your arm is just through it so because it bent and everybody in space time and you know they weren't <laughs> put uh, perfectly back where they were standing beforehand man so pretty gruesome that's, that's what you call beta testing yeah absolutely <laughs> Fuck. absolutely so. Dude, it's it's just like I I feel like that if we ever did you know and they might put it out there. I mean, think about it with the um, the Walking Dead. I I've always been very curious and kind of like shake my head with why people think it's so cool if we had a zombie ap- apocalypse yeah. or whatever. What what why do people think that's fucking cool? By the way, people are zombies. They walk around looking yeah. at their phones all day oh my like God, zombies. Dude. So it could be a metaphoric uh, type thing, but. Why do you like, oh, I can't wait, all the zombies, and this is such a great show, and what if the zombie apocalypse, and I want to be a zombie? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, they think it's cute because it's, you know, a horror thing where they can have some uh, fantasy where they can kill unabashedly, and I would, I would kill zombies, I would do that, dude. No, you'd shit your pants and run. And uh, you you get eaten and become a zombie is what ninety percent of that was that that's one hey, thing. You and I you and I have been in the in the ring and yeah. I've been in fights too and probably you with people that aren't in the right minds that are all fucked up on something that are geared up on fucking steroids and HGH and any other cocktail you have that are pretty much like the fucking living dead anyway. Yeah. And and tell you what they they're they're pretty strong. And they think it's <laughs> and they think it's real in that moment too. And you're like, calm down, dude. What the fuck? No, what I'm saying, that's essentially, you know, you're going to think a zombie is really cute until they, they snatch you by the arm and you can't get away. And yeah. then they're going to eat your brains. And then how cute is that? Yeah, too many movies and TV shows just trying to live by cares through. And that's one thing that never, I never bid on, man, like, like whatever it is, Dracula, Frankenstein, Bigfoot. So that, like those, I'll, I'll take that for my cup of tea all day. Zombies never pop me. I don't get into it. All the movies that have the genre of zombies and all the debates of which type of zombie is it or the best or what will it be like. That sh- I just don't well, know. Zombie I don't number 29 from The Walking Dead makes 100 grand at the fucking Comic Cons per year. <laughs> That's how stupid these Jesus people are. Jesus Christ. Must be they, nice. they, they, I'll, I'll zombie, be zombie number 29 is a bigger draw than, than fucking Cena at the comic <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, he earned it. Who would he ever beat? He beat everybody in The Walking Dead, I guess. Um, well, zombie 29. <laughs> <laughs> got his head smashed in with Triple H's hammer and uh, buried with Cena's golden shovel, and that was all it took. Um, you know, so... What is it going to be? It could be a Montauk project. It could be what they're spraying in chemtrails right now, some act event uh, that, that makes people do that. I saw some videos from Mexico. They didn't really look like a work, but there's some drug down there now uh, that I um, can't remember. Oh, was it the girl head. on the utility pickup yeah. truck thing where she looked yeah. like a demon? And then there's another kid who's going at a bus and he's just fucking taking bumps into the windshield and smashes the windshield out like fucking serious bumps smashing his head into it like you know paul he would have booked him in the semi-main event for heat wave 98 if he fucking had seen this guy back in the day so yeah i, I, I saw those two and they didn't i it don't didn't know. seem it, like it, a, it, too much of a work the girl maybe like, it seemed like something out of like uh, the Blair Witch Project type of Could way be. of filming, like underground filming. But, yeah. you know, they also had the people. I lived in South Florida when they did that thing with the per- pe- person that fucking tried to eat the person's the face from salts. the bath salts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there is versions of this, like the fact of a uh, Michael Jackson, people going to rise from the fucking grave and all that. No, fuck that. But uh, something that's induced that. 
could become, you know, an engineered out of a Montauk project that gets put into the water uh, via Gotham storyline. Absolutely could be. I think that's plausible uh, if that if that's the way things go, man. But you're t- you're talking more about the what they're playing with in the Montauk project and our stuff is is otherworldly or other universe or you know subconscious. It's not quite not quite just living and dead. This is this is interdimensional type stuff that yeah. they're playing with. Yeah, maybe Alex Jones is right. Interdimensional child molesters. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Franken and, and all of them are. Yeah, could be, especially if they know about a secret space program and they're fucking teleporting to wherever they want to go. Uh, I want to say once again, in '82, David Ike started talking about all this shit. In the late '80s, mm-hmm. or early '90s, Alex Jones started talking about all this shit, and they seem less and less crazy every day. <laughs> I, I know. And then, well, he kind of seems more crazy because I saw David Ike with a championship belt so if he's getting into wrestling at this age fuck he's he's nuts but uh he can manage me i don't give a shit man we should reach out to him <laughs> yeah i definitely should um yeah well so we'll wrap up the mailbag now there's one one other in there but we kind of covered it It was about the stranger thing stuff as well um it, well here it is from greg Miron. greg moron uh hello horseman of hope oh. Uh, the tr- three H's there, H H H. Uh, I hope uh, you're there having no hope with that H <laughs> There is no hope, infidel. I hope you're having a wonderful evening in uh, would have been a crazy autumn. I love the content that's growing here on Hameen Media Group. Me too. Uh, with the addition of the locker room, you guys are definitely changing the game every day. Shout out Big Ray for all the work you're doing, man. That's from me, not from Greg Moron. But uh, you are helping me change the game, uh, Big Ray. I'm glad to see you in the past uh, years. There have been a series on the internet and television, The Drug of the Nation, like Stranger Things, and other shows that are putting over the conspiracies and putting in subliminal messages on every corner. Uh, one of the series that got me into conspiracies was Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, a short YouTube series that ran six short episodes from 2011 to 2016. Not sure if you have seen it, but I'll tell you a lot. Uh, but it tells you a lot from what we're being taught to religion to time itself, all wrapped up in a Sesame Street like setting, warming the cockles. It would be uh, really great to see your interpretation of this series, and I encourage the many listeners to watch this series as well. Uh, and to see what you think, beware of the Hawkins lab vans, Greg Miron, uh, the sheep, uh, sheep and wolf's clothing at Lone Wolf GAM, big supporter here in the twitch.tv group. Uh, but I haven't watched Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. I didn't know, don't know if I've even heard of that, but uh, I've never heard of that. Well, we got to watch that. We have to watch that Paris 1919 video this week. I, those are my two th- that I'm going to add on the docket for sure. Is there a way to my, is there a way to get a salary doing this? <laughs> I'll make time for the A's love song show. Yeah, I can, uh, I'll get some salary, but I don't know about a salary. <laughs> yeah, the Paris 1919 documentary. I'd never heard of that until they last week. Up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we appreciate you guys sending us oh, this nice. stuff. You just got to bear with us while we try and catch up, <laughs> you know, but uh, that's, we appreciate you guys in the foxholes doing the work out there for you, for us. Uh, and sometimes we need that Sesame street level introduction to things because, you know, to sit down and watch zeitgeist for three hours is almost just fucking overload sensory overload. So and maybe that's the type of show we should be putting out to attract new followers as well as we grow the channel. You know, new things are going to rise up, and we'll be creative and, and try and do that. But thanks, Greg, for sending that. I'll definitely check it out, man. And you can send me the link on uh, on Twitter, at Ben underscore Hameen, and I'll, I'll pass that around too. So. But that's uh, pretty much it for the mailbag right now. Appreciate you guys. If you want to send us anything, conspiracyhorseman at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, Allah. So, what else did I have on the document? Well, um, well, well, the fact that, uh, well, once again, we talk about the human element, the, the you know Montauk project and all the government stuff, and they're, they're talking about the chat room. They're trying to put lithium in the water. Yeah. And now we're going to welcome our robot and AI overlords <laughs> to save us from it. Yeah. Well, uh, that that is definitely the the meat and potatoes that we're going to talk about. There's kind of two things I wanted to cover before that. Just a quick update, you know, of uh, as the dominoes fall, which, you know, I absolutely love. And some of my friends who are close around me who really aren't into wrestling or conspiracy who I talk to, but they know I'm in it. And we just have friendly conversations over a beer. Uh, my buddy, uh, 
hat put it over to me today. He said, uh, he's like, you were right, man. Look at them all falling after Matt Lauer went down today. And I heard <laughs> all the women on the show on today's show or whatever is good morning. America were crying and shit. Like they couldn't believe it. Like, like they don't know they're in on it. It's Mia culpa. They, they helped cover it up. Uh, you know, the, the fact that they still want to cry and, and play the Leanna Dunham. Oh, oh, what was me? Bullshit. Uh, from the execs at NBC who covered up, uh, Harvey Weinstein for 10 months. And you know, all those guys, they're doing the exact same thing. And they're just a little farther down the chain in the dominoes as they fall. So if we're getting the big dogs, you know, this guy was making twenty eight million a year. I looked up twenty eight million. Really? Yeah. For what? What the fuck does he do? He's not even like a legit journalist doing anything. Uh, you know, that's hard hitting. The Corey Feldman bit was the hardest thing he's fucking done in twenty seventeen. Well, gets like fifty grand a week or something like that, or hundred grand a week. I mean, it's still like you're talking about. There's money in that. I, I mean, they're basically paid shills. Uh, the Matt yeah, Lauer thing. Matt Lauer, twenty-eight million, bro. Once again, it's not probably not the it's probably not the most correct thing to say or most correct answer. But if you make twenty-eight million a year, why aren't you just fucking paying for it? Yeah. I mean, what are you t- trying to just? It's power play. You know, it's it's sickness. It's sociopathic, psychopathic sickness that you have to force somebody to do that. And. Uh, I want to see these women that he's actually assaulting. Are they, they got to be 11 out of tens. Otherwise you just got some crazy sexual dysfunction, dude. You know, like it's ridiculous at this point. Exactly. 28 million. How, how many years did he make that? You know, I wouldn't be well, sweating. He's married it. too. So, you know, now how, how many millions are going out? <laughs> yeah. At least 14. So, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, I mean, and once again, we're at a point now with all this overcorrection and the timing of these people coming out. You don't like to say that, you know, they're trying to cash in on it, but it's just, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. All sure. these people now are coming out at this time because it, it, they feel safe now to do it. Uh, if anything, like people are more judgmental than ever. People are yeah. more de- demeaning than ever. People come down on that stuff and everybody's coming out. So there's really no impact with one person you only know one person's name weinstein but i guarantee you you can't name the 20 30 40 women that he abused oh no because they all came out at once yeah you see what i mean they all it just piled up so much that people said that it's too much too many names to remember see you later the people you know their add kicked in they should all have youtube and twitch channels be burying them weekly (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, it, the, you know, this whole thing now is who's to say that these women aren't trying to, you know, if it's an actress or if it's a news anchor, that they're not trying to go back into the mainstream spotlight and get their pushback. Yeah. No, I think they are. That's the, the like we said before, the new, uh, not to belittle their experience of being abused or assaulted, but to be a victim is the new career launch. And how even that's that's almost as fucked as is getting abused itself. Like the fact that you're going to use this instead of for the right purposes to get yourself some addictive celebrity shine once again. Like, how am I supposed to feel a ton of empathy for you when I know that that's what your fucking mo is? Well, you think about Hollywood and the and the, the word transactional has come up a lot with a lot of people that have been uh, dissecting this, talking about okay, well, Harvey Weinstein. Uh, molested you abused you raped you did whatever but you were in x number of movies during that whole time with him yeah well that's like i saw the stooge report no, i'm just saying if you were that traumatized and it was that much of a, you go right to the police and say this motherfucker raped me i don't care yeah. how many movies he promised me yeah i i agree but then i saw what's her name from kill bill i can't think of the actress name uh, the, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Uma Thurman. Uma Thurman, who put out like a kind of a kayfabe thing of like, I'm disgusted by it because Weinstein had a hand in all those movies, right? As an executive producer. Yeah. So, like, that she knew about it, but she's going to reserve and wait to say her story because 
she's too hot about it right now. And in the past, when she's come out and said shit, it's blown up in her face. So even the fact that she has some stooge report to put over that, uh, they're not, she's not putting it out there yet. And I'm like, if there's a, a, ever an empowered woman character that everyone should look up to who can literally chop some heads right now, it's Uma Thurman. But, uh, so even some, some more of the top women, uh, are still holding back when they could wreck Hollywood. They should wreck it. You got to start playing. She's playing the game right mm-hmm. now. She wants to stand out on her own and yeah. she's, she and her. And to me, it like, it's just like the Corey Feldman thing. Give us all six names right now, right on this thing, on this video you're making. However, what's it like two months ago now? Yeah. Nobody yeah, you gives mother, a fuck. You motherfucker. You know, but I'm just saying, you, if it really happened to you, or you know, I believe it did, but if you're not trying on the other end of it to profit from it and you really want to help people, you speak today. Yeah. You wait a month, a year, or whatever. Like I say all the time before about this whole deal with this motherfucker, somebody's getting, somebody's getting molested. Yeah. Every day you don't say something. Yeah. I dream a little dream of slapping him right across his stupid But you face. think about these Hollywood people, it's sort of like the fucking carny wrestling promoters or even the people I've dealt with WWE there in the office, like how in the fuck did this person get here? How did they become powerful? How did Harvey Weinstein get all this influence? You almost think like there is some kind of cabal or something. Cause you yeah. can't, <laughs> there's no real, he has no real talent for, for, for scouting talent except trying to have sex with them. Yeah, no, he's just a, uh, you know, Israeli you know mobster. What he, did? he put himself over. He's one of those guys just like it happens in wrestling when everybody somebody tells you how great they are all the time people go well he's great yeah he must be great because he says he's great all the time so he's a great self-promoter i guess i I never you know just just the fact of like that he'd be at david letterman pushing the stars be like get the movie out there get the movie out there because he's trying to recoup finances but he's not a real artist. He's, he's a fat job of the hut slob pimp is all he is for, for some movies. There's no, uh, from the vision and brilliance of this, he's a Jewish money man. That's it. And when a power player and when a fat pock mark slob like that can get premium pussy, uh, because he can half ass promise people jobs or even the chance to get a job. And that becomes the addiction that's that's how the whole thing works out man there's i wonder too if he, if what probably did him in was he basically said he would do something for one of them. I, you know I, I mean this this is probably i'm just speculating he probably said i'll get you apart and just to play a rib just in his own sick fucking mind the the girl fucked him yeah and they said too bad you don't have it and he laughed and she oh, was like okay multiple and then times that's how, what's that multiple times that's happened but you know what I mean? It might have – that what did him in was a stupid oh, thing yeah. where he didn't follow through with it, and he just thought he was being – something as simple as that. Because right. yeah. think about it. What what caused him to get exposed now? There had to be something that happened different that finally brought somebody out to say something about it. Yeah. So well, he it, fucked one of them over Yeah. and didn't give him what, what, they, what he promised. Yeah, it was – I mean, this story I mean, was just, supposed to be like 10 guessing, months ago. But what, when you look at 20 years – of him, if you look at 20 years or 30 years or whatever, of him doing this kind of business and no one ever saying anything, now all of a sudden yeah. it just comes out. Yeah, he he, de- he didn't come through on one end. And, and you know, they, this big uh, Stephen Powell shit was waiting to be stepped in and was kayfabe by so Do you, do you think so that might have happened? I don't know. I think, or, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely do. He thinks he's over and it's a power play and he didn't cover his tracks along the way. But this story's been sitting for 10 months and more and more and he hired the <laughs> ex-israeli Mossad intelligence agents to do oh dossiers <laughs> on people that he was paranoid so as you make these moves you're further building the heat against you and it's gonna bubble over you know the kettle's gonna the bubble over on that one and uh that's just what it was try to contain it and the more you try to contain it the bigger he made it and you know, Stooge Report's gonna get out, man. That that's just what it is. And especially with the jokes that have been done at award shows and all that other kind of shit on on you know for the last two three years, uh, that it was it was time. And uh, I think Bill Cosby is really the catalyst. To be honest with you, if they could go after him, they can go after Slob of the Hut over there. We talked that we talked about Cosby though, and we're not saying that never happened. 
But when he tried to buy NBC, all this stuff started to come out. Sure. That's yeah. really like very, very, very. I just, I just am very curious a lot of times about the timing of all this stuff. That there, it's almost like and you played ball, you played our ball game for so long. Go ahead. And WWE might leave NBC here quick too, so maybe they know something's coming down on the heads of NBC and want to dodge a bullet because they're going to jump the Fox possibly. Are they? Yeah. Well, Fox. What I was told is UFC was getting 150 grand and for rights and they wanted 450,000 on their new deal as it runs out. WWE was making a little less than 200,000 from NBC from USA and being in their property and and Fox is telling UFC fuck off so the void needs to be filled so they may jump over there if they get you know, they, they make the, the pot rich. Enough yeah. The, but there's, there's other things there about the fall. If we talked about that, that may be crossing over into wrestling too. I agree. <laughs> so Fox <laughs> might be getting, yeah, I agree. That's, uh, <laughs> all right. Well, we'll watch, we'll watch the show. That's the real show to watch. Yeah. yeah I wanted two. to ask you, you know, and uh, for those who don't, you know, pay attention to our wrestling podcast, you may not like this next couple minutes, but uh you kind of 10 put, minutes. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Yeah, I put over on the locker room, uh, and I just wanted your opinion on it because this is, you know, the deep cut of workers talking, you know, and and you've said it before of how Vince had you guys look at each other in go home meetings and say, look left, look right. If you're not ready to stab this person in the back to get over, then what the fuck are you doing here? You're not going to make it here. So that was in my mind. Uh, when I watched uh, Raw, because in the opening match, uh, Cesaro versus Rollins, uh, which was a good match, great match for a main event, not your opener, because they did eight or nine false finishes in that match, which is, means one, two kick out, if you don't know that from being a conspiracy person, not a wrestling person. And when that happens, uh, the crowd goes nuts in the beginning of the show for those because it's the attempt to win and, oh, he just got out of it. But you got three hours of show to fill. You want to space those out or have those on a bigger match at the end because if you eat them all up in the beginning, by the time it's supposed to mean something, it doesn't mean shit when, when it really does. So later in the night, we have a match between – Roman Reigns and this up and comer Elias, who I think is a star. I'm a uh, fan too. Yeah, in the making, guys got money written all over him, and uh, they did all those falses in the beginning. And this is for the title belt, the IC title belt later. And the false finishes got some reaction, but not where it was, where it should have been. And my point earlier on the locker room was if Rollins and Reigns are riding together, are they saying, fuck this guy? He doesn't belong up here yet. He doesn't belong getting the push that he's getting right now. And he, he's going to take money out of our pockets, not be on our level. So when you go out there, you do all the false finishes so they're not as hot for my match later as a fuck you. Mm. <laughs> and you said you didn't think that they were that vindictive, but I'm thinking to myself. No, I didn't think they were that smart. Oh, okay. To be that diabolical. <laughs> diabolical. I think they were just marks. I think they're just. Okay. I think if anything, what happened is that there's no agent there to control anything. There's no office. Yeah. It's kind of like, I don't know. I don't know if the office is actually really because they used to try to micromanage and handcuff a lot of the guys when I was there, including me, I could do a lot more than I could do on TV. You know that. Sure. But it's just like, I was told not to do this, not to do this, not to do this. it was the exact opposite. So like you, you made a great point, maybe because of his, their spot, they're not really telling them what to do or yeah. what they need. But I'll tell you this, I'm looking at the match and I watched it. Thank God for the highlights, by the way, thank you for <laughs> uploading the YouTube uh, wrestling world with a Z. <laughs> I'll put them over all day, cut my three hours down to 20 minutes. Appreciate it. Oh, so bastard. you well, exactly. You just watch it. It's no big deal. You're not missing anything. I got to do much, the other shows. Much tell, yeah. Talk about what's on Monday and Tuesday this week and know that really, you no know, sucky shit's going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, I'm looking at it. And I'm like, why are they giving? It? I'm in the old school. I'm still before network, like pay-per-views where you're trying to draw the pay-per-views and, and get buy rates. Yeah. I'm saying, why are they giving us away for free? This is supposed to be the infomercial for right. the actual wrestling matches. Right. And they had a clean finish on it instead of, instead of wrapping it up that way. Um, 
it's strange to me. Uh, you know, I was thinking about the agents too, and I could just see him going, oh, Cesaro, he knows what he's doing. He's great. He can really work. And and Rollins was on top. What's the finish, guys? Cool. All right, I'm going to go have a cup of coffee. And, and the Well, fa- they don't. They, they write on a loose leaf paper everything if they move from left to right. So it's incredible that, that first of all, that the the you know they they remember all that stuff yeah you know what I mean it, it, it didn't you have to get that for it's so overproduced and I think a lot of really times the agents why. have that much in the matches now they it's... did what right before I left they were having us write they were because, writing down on loose leaf paper for cues because I, I was said, I was I, I, I would did just a... say most times I'm like just the, I'll give you the beginning the middle and the end and I'll find the camera yeah if the other guy can't find the camera then fuck him it's his fault That's interesting. you know. That's interesting. Yeah, no, they overproduced the hell out of that show before. They overproduced NXT house shows. And, yes, Matt Bloom, they're house shows, not live events. And I was an agent, not a producer there. <laughs> I'm, I'm a dinosaur, I guess. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I, I was at but, uh, Danny Cage Monster Factory Camp with Rip there, and um, Bill DeMott was there. And he – framed up a little different way because he had Tony Gurria as his as his agent or producer and they would just say well what's the finish and they would give him that and then he'd just kind of be like all right Tony didn't Tony didn't give a fuck either okay so (laughs) Tony would just be Tony Black Jack Lanza and all those good but that was great yeah what's your finish work this is it okay Hey, did you see my match, Tony? What? You wrestled? I didn't know you wrestled. <laughs> so <laughs> then, then in my ass. opinion. You, smart ass? <laughs> That's actually a good impression. That is maybe solid. I mean, I only met him once, but uh, it was good. Uh, you know, the then heat on the agents for who's allowing the fuck to do eight falsies in the opening match. Like, how, how does that make any sense whatsoever, dude? You just ate is up it, the rest it, of the show. Is it beyond the belief to think that no, none of the McMahons are watching the show? Uh, that they got something else going on, or they don't care about anything but what they're doing? I don't know. Do, are they at a point in their life where they're just like, it's Seth Rollins versus Cesaro. It's going to be a banger. Who cares if it? they don't care about building a show? They don't care about what has to come later anymore. These guys are having a main event match to open, and then well, your, we want to talk big about, match. We want to talk about, too, that nobody is putting them out of business right now, and there's no desperation. There's That's no true. need to... There's no need to do anything like back in the Attitude Era or even back when they were fighting the parent television council. So yeah. like when they created the heat, Vince would make the most out of everything because he had so much adversity. Right now, it's pretty tame. There's nobody going up against him and there's nobody threatening yeah. him. He has no reason to fight anybody or fight for his company. Well, I got asked earlier in the Hameen uh, media discussion group. I didn't get a chance to answer them. I'm busy today, so I'll answer it here. Uh, Hacker, do you think that uh, Vince has got dementia and that he's booking and doesn't remember or like these things that are going on, especially with the two girls groups or – Whatever it is going on. And do I think he's got dementia or Alzheimer's? No. Do I think he's out of touch with what's cool? Absolutely. And he has so many yes men around him. We've covered this on here before that it doesn't matter if, uh, you know, he he comes up with a rib angle like Jason Jordan. He's going to put it on TV. And you might think this is a publicly traded stock company, but this guy's still going to do what he does so he can pop himself when he's taking a, a shit. It's a traded company. It has stocks, but he still owns it. it yeah. They, they, they don't, they don't, they don't uh, approve the storylines or how much they spend at That's WrestleMania true. through the stockholders. It's like Vince thinks this is cool to pull a roller coaster and spend $5 million on it. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> to, so he can laugh while he's taking a shit that he gave Kurt Angle a black son. Like that, that's the shit that is really in their head. No way could you sit down and go, this is going to make us a ton of money, right? There, there's no one's thinking along those lines. So is oh, that but dementia? Is that said it, or Hunter said it or Stephanie said it. Everybody would agree. Yeah. You do not disagree with any of them or you're done. <laughs> you're, everybody's there to collect a check. Oh, well. Check. I checked. I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, well, then you're, you're saying I'm probably not going to get a job after I apply for those two gigs then, huh? <laughs> well, you're not going to get a job as long as you host a fucking locker room. That's for sure. <laughs> How's that? So fair enough, man. Uh, yeah. I figured you should just, like, on this episode of Locker Room, we cover Raw, which was awesome, and SmackDown, which was awesome. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> See you next week. Have a good, you guys did it all perfectly. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'd ever be a yes man. Like I said, I'd last six minutes if I got the, the job. But uh, looking for that 203 number. Come through real quick. Let me see. Nope, not yet. 
So I got my Google Voice number still at 203. I still have the office number <laughs> when I was in town relations, nice. kayfabe. Uh, yeah, How's so that? Make a call for me. Um, but, yeah, so that's it for wrestling. I just wanted to put that over of the how uh, the sharks really swim and how the snakes really bite. And I think that it is a possibility that they wanted to downplay Elias and uh, maybe there was collusion there or else they're just – Rotten ROH well, guys, they who are, to get they're their shit fucking in. pieces of shit for what they did, and they're they're just everybody always does it when they say, "Well, I'm not going to do that when I'm on top or anything." And we're not accusing them, but it's the same vicious cycle. Yeah. For any I indie workers do- listening, if you do eight false finishes and and you're in the opening match, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I've done eight false finishes this year. <laughs> yeah, I've done. Sure. I think I've done two or three. Yeah, for sure. Oh man. Yeah. So that that's. Hey, just I hope you don't mind for the next show. I might be wearing camo pants in a boot camp oh, match. So I hope you don't mind. <laughs> and I'm growing a beard. I'm doing it all. I was gonna say, man, you got, if you get the head gimmick, then fuck it. Well, I got yeah, a side 90, king. 91, 91 to ninety one percent to nine percent on Instagram stories to not shave the beard. Oh, really? Keep it grown. It's strong. Yeah, man. Yeah, well, I'm, I couldn't wait to get rid of mine. This thing's getting massive, dude. I might have to cut it back. It's as big as it's ever been. So, but yeah, if you want to tag, bro, uh, get it booked. I'm happy to come down and uh, show you how to do the real heel shit. Oh, so. thank you. <laughs> Appreciate but, that. Uh, I only drew an 8.7 for about 10 <laughs> weeks on Raw back in the day. Now they draw an 8.7 all year. Hey, <laughs> I wrote OVW. Oh, fuck off. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'll never be a draw. Uh, I don't want to be a draw, but I don't want to be turn the channel heat either. So, um, yeah, uh, AI, uh, DARPA, robots, Thanksgiving. All this has been spinning around in my head, man, because um, we talked about the Fed and the addiction to consumerism and money last week. Which I that that show always scares me. Just when that's one thing I, I get triggered by is uh, big money talk, you know, and and just like that that slavery. But I'm coming back from my family's house and I go by Walmart and it's six forty eight, almost seven o'clock, and this Walmart's got a big fucking parking lot like the other. This one's extra big. Every fucking space was taken, and then in the strip mall next door where all the stores were closed, every space was taken, dude. On Thanksgiving night, I was blown away. And, like, the city I live in isn't huge, maybe 40,000 people. So it's not, like, a major metropolis when I lived in Chicago or whatever. Or I'm right outside New York City or anything. I don't know if it's the lowest of the low or just people being part of the sheep mentality and, and having to consume or it just being part of our lives now, but it just made me sick to my stomach. Then I went by Lowe's and saw they were completely closed. That actually gave me brand loyalty towards Lowe's to be like, good, don't you ever fucking do this kind of stuff. And I saw that the Black Friday was down this year and that 69% of businesses are thinking about not doing it is much or even not doing it on Thanksgiving, which is great, but I think forever Walmart will be. And then the other part of that was Amazon and their workers are so exhausted and brutalized on 10 hour shifts. Now I saw an inside stooge report video from a guy in the UK who went in. He, it was his first day. They wanted him to pick 120 items per hour. So two every minute. And, uh, off these huge racks that are moved around by robots that are all programmed on the floor. And it said veteran workers there need to pick 300 items an hour. That is unbelievable to me, right? How, how is that even physically possible? And these, in, in these, if you check the video out, the warehouses aren't just like a warehouse. It's, it's, you know, nine warehouses. It's, it's an air airplane hangar pretty much is what it is. It's a whole airport that most employees have to cover 10 miles a day walking they're, they're some of them are sleeping on their feet. They're completely exhausted. They go through those turnstiles that are like cattle crusher turnstiles. They have armed security there to make sure no one's stealing. And even when there was a lockdown, the employees couldn't leave. The bathrooms are atrocious. I guess the buses are way over full. So what we hear about Apple and in China factories uh, with people committing suicide, man, this is not third world 
stuff. This is right in the backyard, and this Amazon brand that everybody loves to put over is really doing slavery at this point. And I mean, it's not like they're paying a prime rate. And by next year, 70% of employees there could all be replaced with robots. Oh, man. That's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot to no, take. It's just, it, it, well, when somebody, and, and these people are not making a living doing this kind of work. Like, even if they're working their asses off, they're not going to last forever. They're going to end up hurt. They're going to end up exhausted. Yep. They're going to lose their jobs. There's a high turnover rate. But the people that are working, I know people that have worked in the, the local facility here. They had, you know, been hiring, you know, spray over here. And even after a couple of days, couldn't handle it. And they were giving no. them 35 hours a week. So you know what that means. No benefits. No benefits. So you're just under the radar on Obamacare, all that shit. Yep. Um, and you got to pay and you got to mm -hmm. spend the 10 hour shifts and you still have to raise your family. And there's no work life balance. And, you know, th that number's not going to go down because more people are ordering off Amazon since he bought Whole Foods and yes. these online pantries and stuff like that. So, so the hundred isn't going to be a steady hundred by next year. It's going to have to be 200 and the people doing 300 are going to have to do 500. And yes. Yeah. I don't know how you physically pick two orders per minute in an airplane hangar. Yeah. How well, what it, what it is, is you have a station. I mean, there are people walking around with bins, not bin hummings, but bins with like, you know, big mail bins where they do hand pick stuff. But right now, small items are on a pallet. Okay. And underneath that pallet are these robots that all already have floor programming in them. And on each of those pallets, there's maybe, let's say, shelves that are one foot to two foot high in the way they stack them. And they'll stack them about 14 feet high. So there is like a step ladder if you got to get stuff off the top to do that. But more steps means increased time. And they are always showing your time in real time to fuck with their heads of like, you're behind. You need to, you need to step up to this many packages. You're only doing this many an hour. And like that uh, frenzied state. So people are going to be working unsafe. So where they are, they have uh, a keypad and, okay, in comes the order and they bing, 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 push it in the keypad and these robots will bring the pallet over to them in all, you know, the, the proper metrics, the least steps possible for the robot, the quickest time, uh, you know, all, all play. Oh, out so they're taking way. care of the robots and maintaining, they're making sure they don't get tired. <laughs> right, right. Well, the robot's Fuck. not going to, right? So, uh, you know, the, the only jobs there in the future are going to be maintenance jobs for robot repair and, and programming. Like it's not going to, you know, there isn't going to be any hand pick picker error along those lines because everything gets scanned multiple different ways with QR codes and, and obviously the mailing stuff as well. Um, so you have an algorithm that these robots are known who you are, what you're ordering, how often you're ordering, how you eat, how you do everything. Yep. And they're being left alone to their own devices, no pun intended. Yeah. In this warehouse, eventually, like you said, 70%, mm -hmm. if not 100%. It'll just be all robots. As soon as it comes in, it will it will automatically register and it right in the queue of as soon as it can move that around there, or it'll update in real time of all right. Look at the trends of what's being ordered right now seasonally, and we'll shift the robots and how they move these pallets based upon pro proper logistics for the fastest time. You let's know? let's not forget that Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon, yeah, and and he has these Alexa devices and these devices that are listening and do this stuff. He has a contract with the CIA that's sure. well documented where they pay him money. What are they paying him money for? Oh, not just them. We are paying them money. The, uh, Amazon is subsidized on every level from shipping through USPS, through tax breaks, and well, through once again, wholesale they're, they're buying. Getting, they're getting support from the government, but the government is not doing it because they're nice. No. There, he's there's, coughing there's up some information. Kind of exchange of information sure. for money. Sure, sure. Just like when we find out Verizon was, did everybody cancel the Verizon subscriptions? No. And did Verizon stop doing it? Nope. And I sent you spent sent that uh, one uh, article this week of all the spyware that's on your phone, uh, from Skype, which we're on right now, to uh, Twitter that that is clocking data in the background and and pushing it forward that they have no right to be even. Uh, 
location awareness of what they're really doing. It doesn't matter. Like why, why is that important to them? So they can track your every move, uh, and market to you digitally based or analytically based on wherever you are and what you might need in that time. And Jeff Bezos, as you said, a hundred billion dollar man. And that also Amazon is the first company to be the fir- on par by 2020 to be the first $1 trillion company is going to surpass And they were Apple. losing money. They were losing money and the government started yep. propping them up. So around that point when he was losing money for years and years and years, and then all of a sudden they had this amazing turnaround. Yeah. This amazing infrastructure, this capital to work off of. Yep. It's, you know, now he owns, he owns the Washington Post. Yep. <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. I mean, that should be something gave, too. Gave hard. Podesta back uh, uh, an editorial. Didn't like, he write one recently that was really weird? Uh, he, was, he wrote something oh, in the yeah. past week that was really odd. Yeah, I didn't. I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but I know it gave me some heat. It was in Drudge, but uh, I passed by it quick. It was kind of like a narrative type piece, right? Yeah. Like, I can't he, think of it either. He's just trying to I make himself it. more human uh, instead of a, a tyrant, you know, emperor. But oh, well, uh, <laughs> I'm sure the hundred thousand workers, yeah. the, you know, they read it. They were like, "Oh, he's not so bad." Well, that's why I'm sure he tried to put it out because he knew the other was coming, right? This uh, Stooge report that this video got out, and it shows like this was straight out of some, you know, uh, the musical Oliver. You want some more gruel? Gruel, right? <laughs> Shit, but uh, that showed what their cafeteria was. They had one for each meal. Like today's offerings are. It was one thing, one thing for lunch, one thing for breakfast, one thing for dinner. It's not like, oh, I'd like uh, one of these seven different sandwiches or whatever. They couldn't even put like a subway in the motherfucker. You know what I mean? Just like, and they have it. They have food in the warehouse from the Amazon pantry, so they have <laughs> yeah, plenty of have food. Everything. Have everything, dude. It's man. scary, man. I, 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 we talked about it off air. It's like the medical. It's like the uh, the the. I can't even say it. It's like me- medicine. It's like all the healthcare system. I should say. It's getting so terrible and so expensive that people are going to beg the government to take it over. They're going to beg sure. just single payer. That's They're all gonna, we want. I'm, yeah. I'm convinced that Obamacare and all that stuff was a way for them to get socialized medicine because we want it now because it's so bad. It's so expensive. Yep. We, it can't be any worse than it is now. The same thing goes for, um, for, for when you talk about workers, jobs. The, the, you know, these kinds of jobs, nobody's going to want them. The robots are going to take them over. Pretty much robots, they want to take over mostly everything. And there has been a pitch for a universal basic income in the future because there won't be any jobs. And they're, they're painting a picture like, hey, if you get this universal basic income where you can live off it and the government gives you money, mm-hmm. then you can really do what you want to do, which sounds awesome. Yeah, because like doing all these again, podcasts. This is Mark the Beast out. type shit, though. <laughs> Yeah, I'm almost down with the amount of podcasts I got to do. I could use those extra hours, man. <laughs> I want to learn how to play guitar. But, but they're, they, they didn't. I, was it Denmark or Switzerland or one country is is dabbling in that or doing the universal yeah, think, basic income over fin, there? I think it's Finland that's doing it. Finland, okay. Uh, people are pretty happy with it, but then again, they never really had the freedoms we had either. Yeah, and what did they give up to do that? More information, more everything of what's going on, how it's being used. Not the fact that it, well, I'm not trying to fool myself saying they don't have it tapped into everything now and that we're not totally. But well, that's what people say. Hey, well, we're doing it anyway, so you might, might, might as well get, as well. get taken care of. Right. If I'm if I'm fucking tweeting out pictures of me in the woods with my shotgun or rifle <laughs> i felt like a mark after that i was like god damn dude just just go kill some deer and i i shot and missed actually i, I was stooged off i was pretty pissed off but it was a doe on the run it was hauling ass i probably shouldn't even have shot but i shot missed um so, bambi dude uh no bambi ran out first and then uh bambi's mother ran out but i had good background uh sight but uh she was on a dead ass run so Okay. What are you going to do? I'll be back at it this weekend. Um, <laughs> well, if you had a universal basic, uh, universal basic income, you wouldn't have to worry about all That's this right. stuff. That's right. I could be out there right now. But I still got to well, do What are your thoughts? on? I mean, obviously, you probably agree with me. That's, you know, that's that's great on the surface. That's great as a veneer. But it, it's it, they're, they're never going to – that they, you should never want the government to take care of you because they'll, they'll take care of you okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, if there was um, – 
a way for me to take it a corporate welfare from Bezos, who's got a hundred billion from the haves back to the have nots as a redistribution of wealth. I might be able to swallow that a little bit easier instead of being on the government tit where it's, Oh, we paid into this. So we deserve it. Or there'll never be any social security because you're getting this now. Like I just don't want to deal in those arguments because you know, that's still 25 years away. And fuck if these crazy bastards are launching ICBMs that can hit anywhere. Like why, why should I fucking worry about a decade from now when <laughs> three weeks from now seems like a year ago, you know what I mean? In the way that we're moving. So, uh, I, I'd be down to entertain it as a plan, but the fact that there's zero trust, especially with these <laughs> sexual deviants and everything we do. Yeah. And like, who the fuck is going to stand up to come up with a plan where like, he's got it right. I trust him. I don't trust any of them. And I think they're all going to hang. So yeah. it's like, it, it's, it's end times, uh, you know, of, uh, of before a medieval shutdown <laughs> in my opinion, uh, but we'll still all have the tech and way to go. And the fact that we're even arguing FCC fucking net neutrality, the, they, they got the balls to fucking try and pull this shit out for more greed when they already have everything in play the way they want it. What the fuck more could they possibly want? Well, I made the, I made the, uh, the, the actually big Vito's wife was on Twitter and talking about net neutrality. And I said, you know, it's already it's already way beyond started, and this is just basically the dra- you know it's addressing it's basically a formality. Yeah. This whole FCC thing because they're doing whatever they want anyway. They just need to make it look like you know people voted for it. Right. And that's all. Right. And they can blame senators and congressmen and politicians who, you know, will still be voted in the office anyway. Sure. It doesn't even matter. Uh, Mikey in the chat room or Mike in the chat room says that they're trying the universal basic income model out in Toronto. Uh, over 4,000 residents are going to get money from the country and try it out. It's experimental. And Scott said it best. We're, we're all just human resources. We're the product, just yeah, like Google. Absolutely. We're the product. I mean, the, just that phrase, human resource, right? We, we absolutely are. Uh, shout out Toronto. That, that makes me feel a little bit better about it because that's a city I <laughs> half-ass like and trust. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in uh, seeing how that goes. So uh, that's Scott Maxwell. Thanks, man, for, for putting that forward. I'll definitely look into that a little bit more. Or oh, that was Mikey you said, sorry. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Mondo, shout out Mondo. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's him. It'd be good yeah. if it was. Yeah. Uh, he's probably playing uh, hockey on uh, this Xbox. That's what he's probably doing now. Um, <laughs> you know what they're putting? You know what they're putting out there? Though, speaking of the um, of the robots and the AI, uh, we we've been passing back and forth that Sophia robot. Yeah. The she's uh, officially a Saudi citizen. So you're welcome. Oh God. <laughs> but you know what? This is, this is what people will say. Oh, this is going to be great because they put it on a female. So obviously the mostly, you know, most of the wrestling fans that were in the ECW arena are going to be happy to know that they'll probably make these sex robots that they can have a girlfriend <laughs> finally. Yeah. yeah. So, you you can actually chant, bull- show your bull- t- Now that the ECW fans have been rec- replaced by the Bullet Club fans, <laughs> they're pretty yeah. much the same people. You can, they just, well, well, Bullet Club fans are two social justice warriors to scream, show your tits, where those guys from, and now she actually will show her tits because she's an AI and has to do what you say. That's so. true. But, but, <laughs> Do you, do you believe that's kind of the thing where it's like you can have – like the, the movie Her was kind of a predictive programming on how you can have a companion that's AI that really understands you and grows the relationship with well, you. They've, and they've got those programs now for the phone for lonely people, right? You give it so much information and then it interacts with you to make you – to release dopamine so you feel – the best you can when you're depressed, like, uh, you know, digital friends and digital lovers and people marrying their goddamn laptops pretty much. <laughs> so very interesting in how, you know, one point we, we went past quick was Alexa, semi-sexy name, right? Half stripper name <laughs> and, you know, and uh, always listening. And I also saw that Amazon is way ahead of uh, Google Home and I can't remember what the other version is. In the fact that companies are already, I don't know, lobbying or pre-programmed into to be able to have their products ahead of others that Alexa recognizes it and will automatically obviously pair with all your devices and you're going to be marketed to even more based on the algorithms of your buying and living and standards. So uh, that one is an AI and, and a self-helper is is 
already leaps and bounds. They're saying two or three generations ahead of the others. And it's supposed to be the hottest Christmas item this year. So more people opening up to have this in their house so they can say, Spotify, play, whatever band. And, you know, the reality is that's what Amazon probably has tapped into the CIA for home listening devices. If they're listening. Well, to, or CIA is tapping into to Amazon. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Amazon. Yeah. How's Amazon leapfrog Google? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that's really, yeah. come on. They got yeah. such a head start on it. And Amazon, you, you got these home devices that don't have, people were using way more Google products than Amazon products. This sure. is what the strange part is. Yeah. Google services, all that stuff. Amazon was really just a shopping algorithm. Yep. But now you have all this information. You're able to recognize voices and commands and all that stuff. So you have the voice recognition technology that... Come on! How I mean, about Google? Home. Hey Google and Hey Siri was way ahead. Way ahead. Of that was the other Alexa. one, Siri. And oh, then uh... look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Siri. And it, it, it listened to everything I said. Yep. Uh, then, then uh, on the Samsung S8, there's another one called. Is it Benning Bentley or something? It's like a. a oh. Uh, um, to Bixby. Bixby. So, you know, these cute names that it's supposed to be like, yes, I'm your butler, Bixby. Like, you know, whatever it is. But it's all touch and, and order, uh, instant shopping along those lines. But here's the other two strange parts to that as we go forward. We haven't even gotten to the DARPA robots yet. But uh, Jesus. how about uh, the fact that they – Amazon home locks where it's all hooked in with your Alexa and the UPS guy gets a one-time code. Oh, there go the dogs of war. Uh, the UPS guy gets a one-time code to open your house and now put your packages inside based on that. that. Not only are we giving up our information, we are literally giving up our security for a one-time home, home invasion because we need our fucking products that bad. They can't sit on the porch or get wet in the rain. Or just pay a couple hundred bucks a year to get a UPS store and just have it there and right, sign for right. it. Right. No, that that would mean I'd have to go out and do something. I can't. I can't go out and do that. It's my my convenience I think the, of life. What was the picture they had? They had one one picture was the um, was the person opening up the door and putting the package right by, like like not coming in. And there was another one with somebody putting the Amazon pantry shit in, in the, in the <laughs> yeah. cabinets in the kitchen. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, God, are, you, are well, you kidding me? What I see as happening as a counter to that is the next thing is Amazon cage where it goes on the inside of your door and it's like a small prison cell. So when they open the door, they can't physically go into your house or get attacked by the dogs as you can hear upstairs right now. And yeah. they leave the package in that little prison cell that's right inside your door that way. Like a, uh, what would be on the space shuttle, right? Like a decompression chamber. When you come in from space, you have to stay in there for X amount. You can't go out until well, they, they were trying to do the drone delivery. Remember? Well, they're not, was not trying. Mess. That was, that was, no, that's going down, bro. It's, it's going to happen as well. Mercedes is in on it too. Better not. My, my drone's going to be in the air. They're all <laughs> hack theirs. There yeah, we go. Yeah, Allah, hacker Stevie. Um, so be, uh, a big part of that, how that this is the end of the world shit here yeah the fucking DARPA robots my god yeah so that's Amazon, Terminator shit that's yeah. straight up fucking predictive programming from Terminator and did fucking Leo Rush program these fucking things you see it jump three boxes jump do a turnaround and then gets its shit in with a fucking full backflip and raises its arms Finn Balor style like I'm I'm just thinking to myself, fuck, uh, there goes half the indie workers who get their well, shit Well, but the DARPA robots have more charisma. Oh, that's true. They cut a better promo. Yeah. <laughs> they look back into the camera afterwards. <laughs> they know, and they know where they, our they, hard is. Hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you check it, right? So, uh, you know, and I, I, I almost want to see a match like that against two DARPA robots. When they can do full lucha, uh, get your shit in, then then you know we're really fucked. Then it's time to really hang up the boots. I think point. about a real steel, another movie with robots yep. boxing and people controlling yep. them. Dude, this this is all like people, once again, oh, that would be cool. You know, we're going to have robots that are going to, people are going to be safe because the robots are going to fight the battles and fight the wars and fight on the ground and do all this stuff and that and why should we even be fighting them in the first place? Yeah, absolutely. Like, what are, what are they going there to do once the robots overthrow the humans of another country? Then what? We just walk in and, you know, or are the robots now in control? Hit the, the, these huge esoteric questions of, like, 
you're going to send them to war for what, to do what, and overthrow who? Is it just to go into, you know, some whatever Taliban or whatever fucking, you know, name you can come up with next week to to invent a new terror squad uh, to, to go after them and then to just wipe out towns so you can come in and take more natural resources, more lithium, more oil. What is, what is going to happen? Here's the fucked up part. Uh, All of our technology stuff gets made in China. What if we go to war with China? We're going to make DARPA robots in China to fight those. They're not going to let that happen. They're not stupid. They're not going to, Oh, you want 20,000 DARPA robots? What are you going to use these for? Um, yeah. Not to invade you. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. God <laughs> damn you, Australia. Right. <laughs> but but yeah. am I wrong? We, we we don't make anything in the U.S. anymore. No. We don't make any of that stuff. We research it, but where is it going to be mass produced on that level? Well, that's the... and, you know they might they might even they might even put the veil up that it's going to create a hundred thousand jobs. Yeah. You know what I mean? This will create jobs. So like, but what are you going to do? You can only build so many robots or missiles or any of these other things in the military industrial complex before you have to use them. And there are sick fucks out there saying, we got too many weapons. We got to use them somewhere. Oh, yeah. Gotta you're go going to build somewhere. them. You got to build them. new ones. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I think it'll be easier to drop bombs on uh, robots because they'd be like, oh, we just got to make more because no human loss of life. They were over there fighting. So, uh, friendly fire, don't worry about it. We wiped out. So, uh, false flag killing robots. False flag That's killing getting... robots to, to create more jobs. But really, by that time, the robots will be building robots. So, it'll only be like Amazon, just tech people fixing the robots that build robots. So, where where are we at then? We are living off of a fucking wage and, you know, podcasting, talking about uh, Roman Reigns being world champ 2022. Here's another one. <laughs> iRobot. Yeah, definitely. And that's pretty close he's to. He's half robot anyway. Roman yeah. Reigns, he's around yeah. like one. <laughs> Not the good half. Uh, you know, the the uh, iRobot, it feels like that AI character that was in Saudi Arabia with just some human face put over the top of it. Like it even looks like that in the back of its head. Like they couldn't, you know, do a full head and contain access to it. Like just, it, that really does feel like the, the eye robot piece and even the way the mouth moves and tries to do expression still not where it needs to be to even seem close to humans, just still very weird and scary. But still, Better facial expressions than people that work on WWE TV. I'm just gonna keep pounding that. Just keep home. hammering. Oh, he's like, yeah. Yeah, no way is Hamid ever getting a job. Hey, Fuck that this. robot didn't say its name and the other name 50 times during the pre-tape, so I gotta <laughs> give the robot credit for that. Yeah, man, it was rugged. It was better than uh, some of the promos we've seen lately coming out of the backstage segments, no doubt. In fact, I would that would be that would actually be a decent gimmick. A guy who's in love with a fucking AI robot and it can walk him down to the ring or what have you, and then uh, you know does the leg pull. That's all you need to do. That I think the it. robots will be fat shamed and have to shoot videos of Planet <laughs> no, Fitness. You would not. You would never have a, a fat robot. Why would you waste that money? Uh, but uh, you know. But that, it would be a supermodel. Yeah, it would, as long as you put enough makeup on it, I guess uh, you can put enough on a pig and uh, it'll look attractive <laughs> to somebody. <laughs> she triggered you during the locker room, didn't oh, she? Oh, man. I'm just tired of fucking heels uh, on TV who blow their fucking spot on social media. It's 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 her, but it's 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 everybody else. The heels who are a heel on the show and then thank people on fucking Twitter for a great match. Go fuck yourself. Like you, you're not you're not really doing this art to where it should be. You're in you you're disrespecting the I love the I love the business phrase. No, you're disrespecting the business left and right by doing that. Kind I don't of shit. love the business. I wanted to get more money. Well, that's what you love about business. <laughs> I don't love the business. That's the stupidest thing I've yeah, ever yeah. heard. I hate that. Yeah. I mean, I, when you I, say I, I love the business to a promoter, like wow, we can get this fucker cheap. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody in the world that they, the Steiners and all the other people that acted like they hated the business got the most amount of money because they yeah. were smart. It's yeah. a job. I agree. Stop. Yeah. And, and really, the do the fat shaming thing when you're a monster heel. Like, do you, do you understand that heels aren't supposed to have empathy? They're like, 
the, she never paid a due. She has no idea really what this is. And the fact that you're on. Well, the comments and replies to her tweets backfired on her because she did it at Planet Fitness, the place that hands out pizza and bagels. <laughs> yeah. all the time. That's why I and said she, rolls. she ate, she ate 20 Tootsie Rolls on the fucking walk back to the rental car. <laughs> oh, she I, didn't do herself any face. She could have went to like a Gold's or something. Yeah. The only, I did steal your joke though. I said the only person I felt bad for in that whole fucking segment was the treadmill at that <laughs> stop so, treadmill shaming yeah sorry uh broke his back um make him humble <laughs> wow uh, you know uh, uh but when it comes to the, the you're, you just went down the four minutes in the company from six <laughs> i'll take it uh you know when it when it comes to uh the the darpa robots and they showed a human one but they've been doing them as animals whether they're pack horses uh, you know, I've seen ones that are, are rabbits that run 40 miles an hour and shit that are just are crazy at this point. Wal and, and to go back consumer side, Walmart has already uh, installed 50 robots for, you know. Really? Yeah. So even at the lower end store and what you're going to see there, uh, some security, some stocking and some like in the back to, to scan and barcode stuff. So, uh, the, that's going to be such a fast in initiation into society. you we're just literally, I think in the next, I hate, I said literally, I should slap myself, but, uh, 12 months, I think you're going to see inundated. You're just going to turn around and it's going to seem like they were always there in the background in every way we go. So very strange times of moving at breakneck speed of changing things from drone delivery where that will just be the norm. Uh, in my opinion, people coming into your house because you need these consumer packages and what they're really going to hurt next. What I think Amazon is going to do, because this was in that stooge video too, is take out the U S postal service. Uh, you know, who's using snail mail now as it is, but they show the well, they, automated. They, they kind of did it to themselves and they've, they've been, they've been leeching off the fucking government forever. Right. And they, they, dude, the, the fucking postal service here, whenever anything that needs to get delivered or that shipped or anything on packages, there's some days they just won't even show up. Right. They don't work five or six days a week now. They did, 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 you know, they no. they deserve to put themselves out of business. But I think that's where even, Amazon will not. will go and take that and be like, we've got a better solution. Plus, we oh, ship so much. It. Yeah, they'll they'll take it over. Right, they'll ship yeah. so much that our postal service by twenty twenty five could be all Amazon run and owned. Because well, that would be the least of our worries with that, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I really don't think that's such a because the post office once again. Those fat, lazy fucks don't do anything. Yeah. I and mean, we got a guy at the post office that, that only works about one or two hours a day. And he fuck, tells everybody to fuck off when they come in and try to make them work. And he clocks a full state benefit or, you know, uh, government benefits package at the end of the day. Yeah. Too. So yeah. fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other part is now if you're that, listening. Fuck you. How's yeah, that? That's right. You fat bastard. It's you want on stand, with fucking, you know, one body planet fitness, of course. That's where the <laughs> post office is. That's fucking that whole Well, he's fat because he goes over for bagels and pizza. He's a social guy. Um, uh, you know, the, the other part is they're now taking over. We're taking over uh, Whole Foods, but that's going to pull into wherever it is. You got Kroger, Price Chopper, Tops. All those are going to go downhill real quick. Not going to be because the the margin of profit on a grocery store, I think, is like 4% or less. So they're going to be able to offer Whole Foods, which some people call Whole Paycheck, at a price that actually undercuts what your conventional grocery store is at this point. True. Now, is Amazon tied in the Monsanto at all? Because the, that's that's the twist in all this, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think they are uh, don't have a hand in yet in growing mass crops and the high fructose stuff, and that's why they started with Whole Foods. But to me, I was like, you know, if you've got to mass produce and mass do that to everyone who's the Walmart crowd versus the Whole Foods crowd, which is very, you know, small versus large percentages – how are you going to get Whole Foods, which, you know, to to the masses to, to drop off that way every day? It's just going to – there's going to be some serious, crazy logistics to work out along those ways. Well, he, you know, he may get too big for his bridges and it might come tumbling down or they might need to do something to hit. You know, look, they got to keep him in check somehow, talking about the CIA and the government. Yeah. You know, unless he's just a figurehead guy and they're controlling all this stuff and – 
he's benefiting with the hundred billion dollar payoff. Is Amazon going to be socialism? You were talking about medicine socialized. Are they going to be the ones to drone delivery your EpiPen and things like that, man? Like, when and you, if you when don't, you if it. you have a YouTube channel that talks about the Earth being flat or anything like that, you don't get your EpiPen. <laughs> yeah, possibly. I mean, I'm possibly. just saying. You know. Yeah. People say that'll never happen, but wait, who who would think they'd be shutting down YouTube videos and demonetizing people who were making a living off this or just somebody wants to give their opinion, can't give their opinion because it goes against it. You could say all you want against Trump, but if you said something against Clinton, demonetized, yeah, strike. And, and the other part offended. of that too is if you, you pose a question, how did Amazon leapfrog Google? Is Amazon going to take over as the competitor to Google, if Alexa's already tied in, and what else are they going to come up? Oh, YouTube's fucking you over. We'll come to Amazon platform. They've got the money. Amazon to be Prime's the already got a video service. So if it was just Amazon Prime Video, and you already know that brand, but you can upload your content, right? And especially if you're doing product reviews for Amazon, I yeah. put mine up, and dude, I get free stuff from sellers. Pay attention to that. Yeah. So I'm providing content and reviews for Amazon on products they sell and. Other companies are sending me stuff, so there's an our secret. It's not just the amazing email. Fucking sell out. All right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, like, I just see this strange thing that was Black Friday, Cyber Monday in the last decade, uh, you know, has turned into a complete mind shift lifestyle change of consumerism, of who gives a fuck what we're really thankful for as long as I can get this at the drop of a hat. I don't need to wait. I just have it when I want it. Mind me this way, this my life. Fuck what everybody else thinks. I have to have it my way. And that is a dangerous fucking mindset, especially when it's backed up by robot technology that eliminates an entire workforce in, 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 in many different levels from brick and mortar stores are going to be, you know, a lot of them are going to be a thing of the past, dude. A lot of them like that, that are operating on a small margin will not be able to even survive. I mean, they've already been shut down to some degree, but now we're going to see even a bigger blowback. I agree. I, and, and for all we kid and everything and the stuff that I do, uh, I, you know, I, I try to really converge all the products I use. I'm trying to take steps back uh, for my consumerism. And my, it's really not that bad. The stuff I, I, I use and everything, I always give away and I'm doing it in public now on the YouTube channel, but I'd always give it to somebody else. I don't ever hang on to five microphones or <laughs> this other stuff or anything like that, but, um, it's dangerous. And you know, it's getting to a point now where you're getting the black Friday preview two weeks ahead of Black Friday or three weeks ahead. And or it's extended. Cyber Monday is extended through oh, Wednesday. Oh, that's the biggest work, that's the biggest work ever. <laughs> yeah. you, people run the Black Friday, and I tell my wife, what about Cyber Cyber Monday? Plus, it's going to be extended. Now Cyber Monday. Oh, now we extended it. Cyber Monday week. Then it's going to be we extended it again. I don't know. It's like there's a holiday sale going on. You yeah. can get something. <laughs> yeah. And I give you a little trick. If you really... If you just wait one fucking day or two days, go to Best Buy and get the open box on the return. You yeah. save a ton of money. Yep. <laughs> you don't have to get it by Christmas. And No, Stevie, again, I need it now. It's my life they, and I need it now. <laughs> they try to overcorrect. Like, I was looking at it yesterday. Since everybody shopped and they were selfish, we're going to have hashtag Giving Tuesday. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, giving Tuesday. I was Tuesday. like, why don't you give every day? It's yeah. like fucking one month for breast cancer. Like, ah, fuck breast cancer. That's, we are 11 months. That's Die. Just like, we don't uh, care about October. <laughs> fuck that. Die October. <laughs> We're coming after you. You don't dare do anything to my tits in October. Yeah, uh, but, but that's what I mean. Everybody's ha either hashtagged or they need that's a, guilt, a, day though, right? to, a day to commemorate that so they don't have to worry about the other 364 <laughs> days. Right. That's, that's what I think is keeping people from really making positive changes in our life or eliminating this negative thing, you know, getting something new and getting something cool and getting it fast releases that dopamine releases yeah. that, you know, that feeling of good, but, but it's, it's literally a drug. The thing is the relationships, the, the, you know, how you teach yourself, how you progress in life, how you get better at things and how you become a better person that, that lasts forever until you, you know, until you're gone. Well, we don't but, teach that anymore. No, we don't, man. It's because it's hard. It's not easy. And people don't want anything that isn't easy anymore. That's why we always kid. I'm like, 
with all the dumb motherfuckers in this country, how are we not millionaires? Yeah. <laughs> It's brutal, the, and, and I'm saying down. it, and, and people that are offended because I'm saying that, dude, well, you, you, you're you're one of them, because <laughs> because that's the deal. If you understand what we're saying, and how we're looking at things and our perspective, then you'd be calling the same people dumb that we are, and that's why the country and the world's in the place it's in because people, they just lay back and go, nah. you yeah, know, those are those same people after you show them the evidence that they shut down after they were so vehement about something else. So. Oh, it goes against my narrative. Because something hurts in their head, and it's called their fucking brain <laughs> that's trying to make them think. Yeah. And they don't like it. Yeah, that's, it feels like Ricky from Trailer Park Boys to me, man. Uh, definitely he's having all these thinkings going on in his head, and uh, he's confused by it. And, you know, that's uh, it's tough to rewire yourself, but that's what being an open uh, mind truth seeker is all about, man. And uh, when it comes to these robots – uh, and AI and augmented realities, I think that's the next thing, too, in, in a big way of we're escaping of what we even really have. And my reality is going to be mine tailored to me. I'm in. Dude, I walk down these halls when I go to teach at the college and you're taught. We we're talking zombies earlier. So into these phones and these phones are going to be and I'm getting a new one for Christmas, too. I don't give a shit. But uh, these phones are going to be the death trap of this whole next generation where there is a whole gap of people who can't even talk like we are right now and carry on a conversation. They just are constantly down, constantly looking constantly in the way and even about to be ticketed in major cities because they're a traffic problem. You know what I mean? Like uh, getting hit by cars and every other uh, stupid ass thing you can do when you're not paying attention. So when the old joke is I can't afford to pay attention, that's, I think, the fucking reality of what's coming, man. Like, not attention deficit disorder, like no ability to communicate, no attention to span at all. What's that, what's that, what's that analogy? And I see it a lot, and I know a lot of people get offended by it, but people, people that are paying for their groceries with an EBT card and they oh, have yeah. the iPhone 10. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a really, like, yeah. Your priorities are fucked up. And chances are they got that, but they might have gotten that iPhone 10 <laughs> through Obamacare at the time. Or their Obama phone, right? If they traded it. No, in. he got rid of that. <laughs> Obama phone lady, she spoke out against them. Yeah, Remember yeah. you saw that video? Oh, yeah. yeah. She was on Alex after. I got Obama phone. Uh, yeah, the whole nine, man. But uh, I don't know where we're going to go. Our offensive level just went into the <laughs> tap the red for a half a second. Thanks. Back off now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Yeah, but they didn't get hot about Nia Jax. But, but really, I look at that too, dude. I, I, you know, I told my wife, um, you know, about the flip phone thing. I mentioned that, and I, I, I really do feel like even that has a lot of cell, cellular radiation. I, I'm a big believer that these phones yeah. are, you know, there's people that have hip cancer, that have yeah. hip problems, have the dead stuff from having the, the phone in your pocket, or obviously the, you know, the brain cancer cases have gone up quite dramatically oh i worked uh, uh, i worked fiber optics right you know that and uh there's a there's a kayfabe debate about how dangerous 5g is and it's not being tested and it's just going to be implemented man there's a lot out there we should definitely do a show on that and might not be as sexy as other things but uh people who say 5g wow that's better than 4g i can't it's wait to just get faster 5G. bigger better gooder yeah it's gooder. It's more gooder that's all. <laughs> but that's what they think 5g but like it's going to be fast and that's all i care about they don't but. realize it's five gigahertz of fucking wavelengths they have more radiation that's going to be coming out of these devices and what has been tested in frequency is very dangerous and shown <laughs> very bad for humans but good for connectivity so you can keep watching Watching the Punisher or whatever the fuck it is you want to watch, man. But uh, yeah, T-Mobile might. I guess T-Mobile is behind the eugenics program. <laughs> you yeah. get unlimited data and Netflix for free. Uh, how That's all you do. My but, wife won't come near the camera. I know, man. I don't know she's why she don't want to come. She's not on, Asian, dude. by the way, Sal. <laughs> yeah, she might be after some 5G. She could be turbaned Japanese. Uh, like, <laughs> I'll just put her face up to the TV for about two weeks and then it'll close when her eyes. Yeah, maybe we'll have the wives on. I was thinking for a Valentine's Day episode, we might all. Uh, if we women, last that long. Yeah, the women who have to deal with us, maybe we'll do it. But uh, I know another guy who bought his girlfriend on the show and it didn't get uh, that good of a reception as well, but he's a Mark, so we won't mention his name. Who is that? 
Oh, Nick Hausman from Wrestle Zone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a lot. But wife number one, we went out and had a good time in the comedy show this week. Uh, actually, we'll start wrapping up, man, before these robots come and knock on our door and uh, take us out with their eye lasers. But uh, I got some good stuff coming up here, infidels. Uh, you can catch me, Dynasty Tag Team Champion uh, Championship rematch on December 9th in uh, St. Johnsville. Jake the Snake Roberts going to be there headlining, uh, doing autograph signings along those lines. Might have a major match. Hopefully, he wears a shirt. Yeah, yeah, I think he will. Uh, but uh, I'll see if I can't do eight false finishes in the opener, see how he likes it. Um, and then I uh, actually just got this booking uh, January 21st at Club Monarch in Utica, uh, which is, you know, Illuminati enough in itself. But I'm going to be doing ha, ha, ha means coming back, some stand-up. I'm going to be opening for the Honky Tonk Man. So should be pretty interesting though, along those lines as well. Now, so. his, his stand-up is, is his stand-up basically just – he tells the uh, Jake story and he, he tells his wrestling stories, right? Probably. He's just a storyteller. I mean, this, I think his tour just started cause he just released a book. So he's doing the double push on that, you know, going off Mick Foley's uh, success and Jake's success. So look forward to, uh, you know, being offensive doing some honky tonk man jokes. Very nice. Very nice. So I hopefully, I don't know if he, I think he's long, he has a hair longer than mine now with the ponytail. Yeah, he does got a long hair. Goes. Yeah, I saw it. And he was sitting down, so he may not even do stand up when he tells it. So uh, if he's got the Gatorade bottle, you don't let him drive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't. So sad. I won't. No, no. The and Gatorade the, bottle is dead giveaway. <laughs> the conventions at least. <laughs> and then uh, Upstate Pro Wrestling, you can catch me there. I think January uh, 9th. Is that the weekend before or the week before? Whatever it is, the second weekend in January, I'll be at Upstate Pro. And I know we've got Ellsworth's coming in. Uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat's coming for a seminar this spring. So it should be pretty pretty good time at Upstate Pro as well. And, uh, you know, trying to get the Conspiracy Horseman booked up here to see if we can uh, have a dip in donuts uh, unification match here and uh, maybe do the Conspiracy Horseman live from up here. So if you're hearing me, Chris, MV, uh, Law Dynasty, you know what to do, Infidel. I'll slap your stupid moron face just like I will pretty and gritty and take back my tag team championships, you infidel morons. So, Stevie, <laughs> what do you got going on? I would, you got to talk to Chris Envy because he does the South Carolina stuff too. Oh, yeah, he's down there for sure. Split the brain. Yeah. Nothing, nothing really going on. Just doing a lot of content uh, for Forge USA. I'm going to do a bunch of their stuff. Their sales are going on right now. Save 10% off any uh, my rack accessories. So if you see my workouts in my home gym, that's what I use is the Forge USA stuff. It's a completely modular, modular can't pronounce tonight, so uh, rack. And I, you know, I like having my home gym because I tend to like people less and less every day. So <laughs> home gyms are great. Uh, also... We talked about this before we before we went on the air, and I've been putting this up on Instagram stories. But I'm either going to start my own podcast, yeah, which we've talked about covering all different stuff, doing that Bill Burr style. But I threw something out there that got even up until now a ton of traction about hosting an '80s love song radio show, <laughs> like, and people were all over it, and that's right up my alley. So. I'm looking into that and seeing if I what platform I would use. I mean, obviously it'll be internet radio. Yeah. If I was lucky enough to land terrestrial or satellite, that'd be insane. But you know, internet radio will be fun, and I can talk. And I did some rehearsals before we went on just to see what it would be like, like running some stuff through Spotify and playing music, and it was fun. That's was cool, cool, man. Yeah, I, I could definitely see you doing '80s DJ stuff, where you know, taking it back the nostalgia piece. There's a whole generation is looking for it, especially in the era of shit music that we have now. You might as well. Shit everything. <laughs> they want to go back to the 80s for everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. right. So, yeah, I mean, uh, do what you love. That's what that's what I'm about. And the more content you create, the more impression you make on people. And who knows what you might make a connection there will bring them to this show here as well, man. We just keep expanding yeah. our circles. I just look at it real quick like this, like just like in wrestling. You know, I, I know that my style of doing a podcast could be different than even everybody else's because it's my personal experiences or my viewpoints on things or the way I look at things. Yeah. Uh, but I want to do something that nobody else is doing. No other wrestler or nobody you would think looks like me would do. And yeah. 80s love song is about the opposite of, <laughs> you know, and I like it too. It's not, not a gimmick. I no. really like that music. 
and it'll shine through. That'll you'll be as passionate about this as you are about that as you are about this in conspiracy theory, man. So you're taking all the aspects of your life, just like wrestling, and they say turn that volume up to eleven, right? And uh, I think that's what this platform and all the friggin' free technology you get is uh, being put to good use when you do that, man. And it helps people get through their day uh, in this monotonous life when all this bullshit does piss us off. So instead of just racking our brains about conspiracy, why not some Stevie Richards escapism with some '80s love songs on a nostalgia pop well you sold me hopefully you <laughs> sold everybody out there <laughs> well y'all uh, man i'm glad to be back on with you tag team in the gay today we missed uh greek god papadon we miss you big sal hopefully we'll have all four of us riding out next time we got some serious work to do uh with uh, all the stuff you guys sent us at conspiracy horseman at gmail.com appreciate it gonna check out that series gonna check out paris 1919 Maybe even a little more into Montauk Project, especially with that boat, because I know Sales got some stuff to put out on that. And obviously, Greek God Papadon's a New York City guy. Well, and, and living on Long Island will have something to say about it. Um, what else going down? HackerHameen.Podbean.com, iTunes, HackerHameen, Stitcher. Uh, you can check us out there wherever you want to get your podcasts. And join the uh, Hameen Media Group discussion group on uh, <clears throat> Facebook. That's where the cool kids are hanging out if you want to talk wrestling. That's get those stats, by the way. You told me those. Those are awesome. Yeah, man. Uh, it was crazy. That first weekend uh, with Survivor Series, everybody jumped ship from one group to the other, and we had over 1,800 uh, comments just on uh, those shows alone in real time and then almost a thousand really between uh raw and smackdown this week so you know we're enjoying it it really helps to enhance the show especially during a time where (laughs) you don't want to be sitting there watching it yourself and be like this is fucking rotten and uh, (laughs) and, uh, you know at least you can go bitch to somebody else and have some laughs about it man and uh, we're posting all it's a support group basically (laughs) it is it is a support group for addicts really at this time but uh right now you're one of the coolest kids because you're watching two of the four consumers Conspiracy Horseman, Big Stevie Cool, Big Sal Ala is in here. Greek God Papadon, bring yourself back because I invented the $5 face slap, moron. I'm Bin Hameen, and this has been your Conspiracy Horseman. YOLO! <laughs>